is 6 o'clock. Uh, I'm Jeremy Hansen, the self-appointed acting chair for just a second longer, um, calling this meeting to order. Um, the first order of business is a reorganization and the election of the chair, vice chair, and the clerk. Um, it's clerk and statute, it's secretary, and most other, other bodies for 2018-2019. Have any nominations for chair? I'd like to uh, <clears throat> nominate Jeremy to uh, I'm chair. I'm going to speak right now for a second. You're going to pass out, but you have no business voting people because you know each other well, get together, learn what's happening, get position papers on different issues. And it will take more than one dumb month for one meeting to do this. Now, shut up. Okay, there is a, has, is a nomination for chair. Are there any other nominations for chair? In order to conduct this, what I should I should yield the, the floor to someone else. Does somebody else want to well, conduct? Can I raise a point of order? We haven't even done introductions, so for many of us, we don't have any idea who has got what qualifications to be chair. And following Robert's rules of order as required by statute, nominations come first, discussions come second. And Dan, um, you, you are to be seated there. Thank you. So no, that is... Uh, It is, a, it is a good point. I, again, I am trying as well as possible to follow the rules as <coughs> required by statute. <coughs> Anybody who objects to me calling for the yeas and nays for chair, even though I am nominated, it's not. I will call for the yeas and nays, so okay. we don't even have to worry right. about that. Thank you, Alan. All those in favor of Jeremy being chair, uh, please say aye. Wait a minute. Aye. Aye. What about first? the discussion? No. There could be discussion. Oh, yeah, there should be there should be discussion before this call. Discussion. Okay. Is there I'd like to say that um, I believe that Jeremy is probably best suited as the chair as since he's organized this whole thing. Um, but I take the point that was raised earlier um, to have some validity. It would be good for us all to get to know each other and our qualifications, and perhaps we could amend, I don't know if this is proper to amend a nomination, but um, for the term period of, of act, maybe acting chair for two months while we get acquainted with each other and determine who might be the permanent chair. That makes a lot of sense to me. Well, well so, follow rule. Robert. So, so, Mr. Whitaker, technically you're, you're not a member of the board at present. Um, so, I'm amenable to any change if anybody's interested in that. Um, it's not, it's out of, it's out of order according to Robert's <laughs> rules, according to statute, but I'm, I think Mr. Birnbaum has a point. Does anybody, um, would you like to make a motion? Do you, I, I don't know if you can make a motion to amend the nomination. Do you have the statute in front of you? I do. Can you? Can you tell us what exactly it says about the first meeting? Because if I remember, when I look at the statute, it's very prescriptive as to how things get done. It's that would be helpful. kind of weird, but mm -hmm. state government trying to tell us what to do. Because we, we, we do want to make sure we do the right thing. I, and I don't want to see it slip off on the, on the wrong foot. Sure. Uh, annually, on the second Tuesday in May, following the appointments contemplated in Section 3059 of this chapter, the Board shall hold its organizational meeting. At such meeting, the Board shall elect from among its appointed representatives a chair and a vice chair, each of whom shall hold office for one year and until his, and until his or her successful successor is duly elected. Yeah, so I, I think we're in, the, we're in that really strange problem zone that will never happen again because we've never organized it. Right. So we're not reorganizing. And most times, these meetings, when you elect officers and when you choose the day of the month and you're going to meet or, or all that stuff, um, this comes during a reorganization meeting and everything seems familiar and we all know what to do. And this is a completely new group of people. And I agree. I mean, I don't know everybody here either. On the other hand, I don't. There's something weird about not being organized and still having a meeting, even if the only business we're taking up is introducing each other. So that's why I think it, it's proper to go ahead and elect a chair. And I'm, I'm certainly happy voting for Jeremy just because of the amount of work he's done so far. And I think he's further ahead of 
all of this than any of the rest of us are, either individually or probably collectively. <coughs> Uh, maybe it would be a good idea to go over what the responsibilities of the chair are. I think that may leave some of the um, concern. The, the chair runs the meetings. The chair um, is a member of the, what do they call it, the, uh, is, is an officer of the district uh, along with the vice chair and the clerk and the treasurer. Um, the chair shall preside at meetings. The chair shall preside at all meetings of the board and shall make and sign all contracts on behalf of the district upon approval by the board. The chair shall perform all duties incident to the position and office as required by the general laws of the state. It would be like the chair of a select board. And I think there's no compensation involved, is that correct? I mean, it, can, it can be voted on later, but there's no compensation. There's, 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 there's no bank account, has there's no like that. money. So. And there's not even a treasurer who gets appointed. There is a treasurer. The treasurer may not be a member of the board, but that doesn't come into play until we have actual Until we actually money. have business, okay. Yeah. So there's just the chair, vice chair, and a clerk. Correct. Okay. And there's no secretary. The clerk is the secretary. The clerk, the clerk is, is the responsible for, ma for maintaining all of the um, all of the documents, warning the meetings, much like a town clerk. That's why it's a clerk. Okay. Does the clerk have to be a member of the board or? No. But can be? Can be. The clerk is not required to be a member of the governing board. The treasurer may not be a member of the board. Well, I think one of the things that's going to have to get decided tonight is who's going to be the legal counsel and who's going to, well, the, the, there's obviously a need for legal counsel because we don't know whether we have the right under statute to have a provisional chair for, for a couple of months while we get to know each other and figure out who we, we need a conflict of interest, you know, policy, et cetera. It would be unfortunate to elect a chair, you know, for a 19-month period, 20-month period? No, it's one, one year. year. One year. M municipal oh, okay. attorney in residence who might be able to not give us quite legal <laughs> advice. Uh, Mr. Barlow, um, any thoughts about this one way or the other? I mean, the statute does state that we're supposed to follow Robert's rules and such, um, but I suspect that given this is the first meeting, we have a bit of flexibility. I think we have some flexibility. Um, I personally would like to perhaps have the opportunity to know who uh, other folks are on the board. I don't think that we would have to worry that we're going to be violating some rule, Robert, some provision of Robert's rules that would invalidate what we're doing this evening. So I would welcome the opportunity for a little bit of introduction so I could get to so know y'all. Should we just go around the room and introduce ourselves? I think that would be perfect. <coughs> might, might I also suggest that perhaps in the spirit of uh, getting to know ourselves a little bit that uh, we have this discussion about who we are and what we're interested in just a, a little bit so that we can then say the a decision about the chair may feel a little more comfortable uh, rather, rather than uh, saying that's the first order of business. Okay. Start with Chris and just go around. I'm Chris Riddell. I am a Perry City representative. I'm also a technology director for a small a uh, digital marketing firm called Stagecoach Digital in Burlington. We primarily handle our, do strategy and execution on email marketing for large nonprofits, helping them raise money online. Um, prior to that, I was an uh, IT administrator and chief information officer at Goddard College for eight years. And um, I'm interested in a municipally run and owned uh, internet provider, fiber provider. That's why I'm here. I think Barry City could really benefit. I think the whole county and region could and uh, I'm excited. Uh, that said, I am uh, not, I'm very recent to, I'm, a, I'm on the Board of Civil Authority in uh, Barry City for a couple of years. I've just got appointed to the school board. I am not uh, the resident parliamentarian and will defer to those who know or appear to know, so um, until I know better. Thanks. Thanks. I'm Jeremy Hansen. I'm from Berlin. I'm uh, the vice chair of the Berlin Select Board. I'm a computer science professor at Norwich University. I also did work in IT, IT security before I came to Norwich to work in academia. Um, I'm interested in this because um, internet throughout central Vermont where it's not well wired, so outside of Barry City and Montpelier, Barry Town, um, is, is pretty awful. I'd like to see that improve. 
I am Andrew Gilbert, uh, about a 30-year veteran in working in the computer science, software as a service, cloud infrastructure world, um, probably one of the more relevant highlights, including a stint for eight years where I built a very large cloud-based voice application platform that required a fair amount of connectivity to function. Um, I'm currently working for a small startup that actually does infrastructure support for tier two and tier three telecom companies. Um, and I'm here just out of an economic development perspective for the town of Cabot. And your sign doesn't show what yeah, town you're from? Yeah, because I'm not officially here yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> so which, which town are you from? Cabot. Thank you. Uh, and I'm Bob Klein from East Montpelier. Um, uh, I'm currently retired, but for 30 years before this, I ran the Nature Conservancies, which is a nonprofit, uh, conservation nonprofit program in Vermont. And uh, as part of that, I was uh, the representative from the field on the Technology and Information Systems Cabinet. So I have a lot to do with sort of uh, TIS policy and computer systems for a large organization. And I'm interested in this because um, I had trouble getting internet connection in East Montpelier, and uh, ever since that struggle, I've thought there must be a better way to do it. <laughs> I'm Bob Burley from Elmore, um, Vermont native, U.S. Air Force combat pilot. Um, had a corporate career that uh, touched a number of aspects of corporate America, including manufacturing and finance. Perhaps the most relevant to uh, this particular group of people is that I was the senior engineering manager in large systems development, research and engineering for Digital Equipment Corporation, which actually invented cloud computing and a number of other things. So I had, I'm no stranger to, to big boxes and lots of wires. Uh, <clears throat> we're also involved in the internet development and it's nascent nice informative times, both from an architecture standpoint as well as from a negotiation standpoint with the international com uh, countries that were interested in it. I date myself from the original ARPANET and the DARPANET for those of you who are internet geeks. Uh, and I retired uh, some years ago as the chief operating executive of $40 billion a year division of Hewlett Packard. I apologize, in my state of retirement, I had a promotion immediately following that. Uh, six months later, I was promoted from retired to retarded. Uh, I'm an active commercial pilot and the former chair of the Elmar Select Board. So I'm Jim Barlow. Uh, I am a, an attorney. I specialize in municipal law. Uh, my clients are primarily small and mid-sized municipalities around the state of Vermont. Um, I work from my own home office, so I am a consumer of internet services. My wife also works from her home office as well and has done so for the last nearly 20 years. So I share the perspective of the end user of what we might be potentially providing to others uh, someday. Um, I'm a representative from the town of Marshfield and as well uh, from an economic development perspective from my town. So. <clears throat> Sorry, um, my name's Phil Hayek. Um, I'm a Middlesex representative where I'm on the select board. Uh, I'm a former superintendent of schools, uh, first in Bennington and then here in Washington Central. Full disclosure, I've worked with Alan Gilbert down at the end of the table, who was my board chair for a few years. Uh, following that work, I became the State of Vermont Educational Technology Director and served in that position for, I think, four or five years and then moved on to uh, nonprofit work where I became the Director of Technology Initiatives for the Vermont Institutes, which formerly was the Vermont Institute for uh, Science, Math, and Technology. Um, I was involved with a lot of uh, federal grant um, administration, and I was the uh, tech technology representative to Jim Jeffords' office, um, did a lot of work with them. Uh, probably the most technical thing I was involved with was that I uh, developed, uh, had built, and managed uh, a full motion video network that connected every high school in the state of Vermont. And this, this was pre-internet days, and we were trying to develop a, a distance learning platform. We were able to do that for a, a, a length of time until the internet became more or less robust <laughs> enough. And in some places, they probably still wish they had the, uh, the old system that we had. Um, 
I'm now uh, uh, retired, but you know, it's <laughs> never really retired. Retired, but I'm also a private practice consultant, and I work with school districts around the state on E-rate, which is a federal program funded by the FCC uh, to provide subsidies for schools for telecommunications, so internet being one of those things. Um, and I guess what brings me to, uh, to this is, first of all, um, in Middlesex, where I live, my own internet connectivity is terrible. Um, and since being on the select board, we've heard a lot from uh, other people in town who feel that we really need something, uh, especially to drive economic growth uh, within the town. The other piece has more to do with the work that I do, having, having been very familiar with schools and their needs around internet um, for instruction, uh, it's really very lacking. And once you get outside of any kind of, well, I hate to say urban uh, environment, uh, it's just not there. So we're not, we're really not able to provide the kind of connectivity our schools need. I think for our kids to really get uh, for first class education. So um, I, I see the benefit of this kind of thing uh, helping support, you know, obviously all of our our citizens. But but for me, the schools is a a big driving factor, so thanks. Hi, I'm Dan Jones. I'm from Montpelier, the, their representative. I'm, um, my work uh, addresses the Sustainable Montpelier Coalition, uh, which is set up to try and build a model of environmental and economic sustainability within the city. Um, my history go in technology actually goes back to the time where I worked with the uh, city of Boston on the cable franchising uh, period and was their new technology expert. So uh, we got to put in, in essence, the first uh, broadband packet switch network in a city uh, on uh, coax at the time. Uh, and then worked with cable companies and cities for a number of years uh, in that area. I, I then went off to do other things and found myself more in the area of social change, uh, et cetera. I believe that having a local internet that has a certain amount of uh, robustness and capacity for um, serving our local uh, needs is probably crucial in the long term because uh, the more we give it away to the large corporations, uh, the more we're going to be marginalized in, in terms of uh, if things go wrong. So uh, I volunteered to be part of this as they uh, basically seeing the political aspect of the future of uh, having our own internet. Great. I'm Steve Whitaker. I'm the Montpelier alternate. Um, my, I built MATV systems before cable existed. In was building cable TV systems and phone systems out on the West Coast. Uh, in Vermont, I've, my primary focus has been advocacy. Back in the SIS days and GovNet days, uh, I was uh, informing legislators and uh, commissioners on what opportunities for efficiencies and whatnot. Got involved in the 10-year telecommunications plan in the early 90s which was deficient then, as it's deficient now. Uh, Vermont Interactive Television and its subsequent sub, uh, sunsetting uh, and need for replacement. Uh, Charlie and I, gentleman with the cap, was the, he's, Charlie's the telecom engineer for 30 plus years at the Department of Public Service. And he and I have worked together for that long, at least, uh, on the E911 system. So, Public safety being a big part of what I'm looking to see whether the potential of this accomplishment. I was involved in the earliest creation of the GIS system, the Geographic Information System computer mapping, where we got everything but the fiber uh, in, into the system. Uh, ten year plan. Most recently, the last year or two has been focused on the opportunities and pitfalls of FirstNet being a 25-year contract with AT&T for which we have given forfeited $25 million that we could have spent uh, for what they will spend it on. Uh, and recent, most recently, the microcells. The, the gaps in the cellular coverage required these microcells 
which are the size of this and hang on a pole and provide a half mile of coverage. So I'm looking at not just internet here, I'm looking at the opportunity to fill the dead zones in the public safety radio with repeaters and close rings for network resiliency, et cetera. I'm a thorn in this guy's side. He's not joking. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm John Quinn. I'm representing Northfield. Um, I've been in uh, IT for about 18 years, holding a, a number of positions from network and systems administrator, project management, director of application, uh, enterprise applications. I uh, did a small stint as the chief innovation officer for the state of Vermont, and I'm currently the secretary of digital services, um, serving uh, at Governor Scott's pleasure. So. Uh, I'm a recovering select board chair as well, every <laughs> four years in that position, and I'm really here for an economic uh, development standpoint in Northfield and the region and trying to uh, make sure we have as many options as possible to try to boost economic development. I'm Michael Birnbaum, I'm from Plainfield, and um, even though we haven't heard from Alan yet, I just want to say how impressed I am with this whole board. We have a highly qualified group of people. Um, uh, I, I run an ISP, um, Central Vermont's only WISP, wireless, fixed wireless broadband provider, uh, Cloud Alliance, did I say the name? <laughs> and I also um, am um, the founder of Kingdom Fiber, which is a 22-town fiber to the home um, enterprise in the Northeast Kingdom um, hasn't launched. It's almost ready in another few weeks. Um, we just completed a municipal build in the town of Craftsbury. The town owns the network and it will become part of the Kingdom Fiber Network through an agreement. Um, and both of my ISPs are products of public-private partnerships. Um, I think it's really important that the state and the feds and private enterprise get together and make these things happen. Um, having both a fixed wireless and a fiber ISP, I think I have an interesting perspective on the advantages and disadvantages of both. Um, there's a rosy future for fixed wireless. It's going to get a lot faster pretty soon. and there's um, undenied benefits to fiber to the home, except for the cost. And so I hope that our board will look at all those things and find the right solution, the Vermont solution for our area. Uh, I'm Alan Gilbert. I'm the representative from Worcester. And I echo what Michael just said. This is an amazing collection of people. I had no idea. Um, I, I don't have half the tech experience of one half of most of you. I sort of stopped with American Flyer trains in, in, in our basement when I was, I don't know, 15, 16 years old. Um, but I've, I've been involved on the softer side of a lot of tech issues. Uh, I was a newspaper reporter. I was a teacher. I, with a bunch of ex-journalists, uh, was involved in a, a public policy research and writing organization. And then in 2003, I, four, I started working for the uh, American Civil Liberties Union of Vermont. I was the executive director there until 2016. Um, and I know some of you from, from uh, that work, um, especially Stephen. Um, Stephen didn't mention he's, 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 he's helped to prosecute, I shouldn't say prosecute, to litigate some terrific legal cases uh, largely by himself and has really accomplished some amazing things. Uh, he, he didn't mention he knows a lot about electronic medical records, uh, which is something I became very in, involved in. My, my interest in, uh, in telecommunications actually goes back to when I started working at the Rutland Herald in 1976. And in 1977, um, the newspaper went from the cold type system they had. They, they actually had linotype machines there until 1973. They went cold type. And in 1978, they added a computer front end. They were the first newspaper in the state. And I think they were the first independent daily in, the, in New England that computerized. 
and of course it was a god awful mess. Um, within a year, they had a computer uh, connection with their sister paper, the, the Times Argus here in Barrie, which was also a first for newspapers in New England. So it, at times, I felt like I was really watching this amazing development um, that, that I had no idea where it was really going to go and how far it was going to go and how, how much is still changing. I'm very interested in the privacy aspects of digital communications. When I was at the ACLU, I did a lot of work around net neutrality, around surveillance. I did a lot of work around electronic privacy of electronic medical records. I also live uh, in, a, in a particular place in Worcester that has uh, no cable connection, and probably never will, um, doesn't have wireless, and we are slowly losing all broadcast TV reception that we can get. Um, we live on, uh, up against um, the Worcester range of mountains and we can't get any TV signal from uh, Mount Mansfield. So the only TV signals I get are right now from Mount Escutney. <laughs> and I think PBS is about to drop that one channel. It's going it's to drive me absolutely crazy. So I'm, I'm sur I feel myself a poster child for uh, somebody who lives 12 miles from the state capitol and is in this communications dead zone. I mean, it's, it's kind of impossible to believe, but that's how it is. So I, so I feel people's pain when they talk about the need for, uh, for robust broadband. And when this, I, know, I also know, know Irv Tomei, uh, who was uh, one of the leaders in getting EC5 going. Irv and I know each other from school finance stuff. He, he was very involved in education finance reform from, from the town of Norwich. Uh, and I've admired what they've done down, down there, and I'm hoping we can have similar success up there. And it, this is an amazing bunch of people. I, I mean, I want to be in this board just because of you guys. Uh, we have no women, which, I was just gonna say it, which kind of <laughs> worries me a little bit. That, you know, we, <laughs> just sit up there. <laughs> um, uh, but I, I, I think that just reflects what, what how tech has developed over the years. And so it's, uh, I, I have a brother who's an engineer, so I have some insights into the engineering world. But thanks, thanks for coming tonight, and this will be an interesting journey, I'm sure. So I think we can hear from the alternates that are here too. Since we have already, S Stephen, you're, you're you're the only alternate. Okay, so who else is an alternate? I'm Jerry D. M. and Tidis, alternate from Berlin. Uh, can you spell your last name? Sure. D I A M A N T I D E S. I do that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also on the Berlin Fire Department board. Um, I have a PhD in environmental and natural resource economics. I am currently working and have been working for the past almost 30 years as a project planner mostly water resources related projects, ports and harbors, flood protection, storm damage protection, uh, a lot of work with the Army Corps of Engineers as a consultant. Um, and prior to that, I was, I had a prior life in New York City, as you may tell, and I was the senior, um, I, I was the administrative superintendent for highway operations of the Bronx. I had worked my way up through, and I was the senior Bureau of Highways person in the Bronx uh, before I gave that up and, 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 and changed careers, mid, midlife career change, a little expensive. Um, Did you work with Bob Moses? Robert Moses? Robert Moses. I know Robert. <laughs> of Robert Moses. I mean, he, he predates me a little bit, really. <laughs> I just wanted to check. <laughs> I mean, you, you work with the, what he created. I, to some degree, yes. That's, 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 that's very true. Um, what, what, else, what else do you need to know? Oh, I am a, you know, I'm an end user. And in Berlin, I just squeak by. I've been, I've been working from a home office since... AOL dial-up days um, in Providence, Rhode Island. I'm, I'm two years now here in Berlin, um, which I love being here, but I just squeak by with my internet. I mean, it is, I, had, I didn't know it was going to be, uh, it, it, anyhow, I just squeak by, thank goodness. Um, 
So I'm very much interested in the end, end user aspect of this um, as someone that works from home, very much interested in the economic development aspect of this for rural areas such as we are. Um, and I also very much like the idea of this being a, a municipal organization as opposed to being um, part of the larger corporate entity that, that, that you know, we have limited choice. That's me. I can go. Uh, my name is Elliot Bent. Uh, I'm the alternate for Barry City. Um, I actually just moved to Barry in this, this past June. Um, before that, I lived in Montpelier. Before that, I lived in Burlington, where they have you know the good fiber. Um, uh, I spent uh, you know about three years as a legislative and regulatory analyst for uh, for trade industry groups in DC, specifically. Uh, focused on telecommunications, so cellular telephone uh, and uh, cable uh, providers uh, for 50 state plus federal. Um, after that, I worked uh, under contract with Google uh, in the state to promote um, uh, their business offerings, um, uh, get, get businesses online, that type of thing, uh, planned uh, maybe 20 or 25 events throughout the state promoting the concept of the internet um, as a as a helpful tool for business, um, and you would be amazed at, at how many people like their eyes were opened. Um, also, did you know education and connected a lot of um, Google's uh, services and and departments to Vermont needs or Vermonty applications. So, for example, uh, I arranged to do a, a Google. Street view of the state house, um, uh, stuff like that. Um, uh, I currently work for the Institute for Sustainable Communities as their communications director, uh, where I coordinate um, communications and branding uh, between China, India, Bangladesh, and the United States. Um, and uh, we're primarily focused on helping communities throughout the world uh, tackle whatever challenges that they have, uh, be they social, environmental, or economic. Um, so we do a lot of work in primarily urban uh, communities throughout the world um, focused on uh, helping them do whatever they need to do, basically. Uh, Mark Farley, alternate for Northfield, background in the military and education. Lived there about 17 years and been struggling with a variety of internet providers in, during that time. Live off the dirt road up in the hills. Um, and I'm just a consumer and am interested in helping in any way I can to see that uh, this initiative uh, is fruitful. Tom Fisher, uh, alternate for East Montpelier. And uh, I work for Vermont Energy Investment Corporation under the Efficiency Vermont contract, um, which you're probably more familiar with. Uh, I am mostly involved with metering, sub-metering. Um, getting into Internet of Things, wiring up uh, anything from residential to industrial to cow farms, um, trying to look at you know monitoring processes or monitoring buildings and providing live feeds to dashboards, alerts, that sort of Internet of Things sort of stuff. Um, very interested to see this enterprise get off the ground. And um, because I do find myself in a wide variety of locales talking to a wide variety of people, I'm interested in making sure that we are able to service that wide variety of people that live in the states. Thanks. Um, I'm Becca Schrader. I'm the other alternate from East Montpelier. We wanted to be really thorough. <laughs> um, I'm also a woman, which I didn't realize until I got here was going to make me unique in this group. So. <laughs> um, and I'm the business resource manager at the Vermont Community Loan Fund, so I spend my days um, helping small businesses survive and thrive in Vermont, um, which often includes access to internet. And um, I also work closely with the Small Business Administration, USDA Rural Development, um, and that sort of thing. So I have a lot of experience with you know, kind of the financing end of um, working on things like this. So that was my primary interest was economic and community development and um, and then also as an end user who um, I've lived in six states and on three continents and used internet in all of them and 
um, it's pretty bad here <laughs> where we are. So um, I, when I first came here, I was uh, working as a freelance writer and consultant and uh, found that very difficult um, to work with clients you know, out of state and trying to use Skype and conference calls and that kind of stuff. So um, I think that the Vermont lifestyle um, is kind of, it would be really well suited for people to be able to work from home. Um, and I definitely am interested in seeing that be more feasible. And so. Hi everyone, my name is uh, Jonathan Williams. I am the alternate for Marshfield. Uh, I am the chair of the Marshfield Planning Commission. And uh, in my current line of work, I am the grants manager for the Vermont Food Bank. Um, prior to that, I was an administrator for a number of small municipalities. Prior to that, I worked for the League of Cities and Towns uh, with Mr. Jim Barlow over there. And prior to that, I was a US Peace Corps volunteer. Um, and the internet uh, is faster in Morocco, in rural Morocco, <laughs> than it is here today, uh, which is unfortunate. But uh, I look forward to working with you all. Um, however I can be of assistance. Uh, I'm a millennial and was raised by the internet, so uh, <laughs> yeah, here to help. Well, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm actually just here to be a fly on the My name's Ram Schneider. I'm here to be a fly on the wall for Williamstown. We haven't appointed somebody yet, so I, I, I honestly, I'm not going to say my expectation is that I'll be appointed or not. i would just say that with all the brilliance flashing around this room, I'm a high school dropout. And I wrote websites that ate up all the bandwidth you guys created. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully I'll be sitting here next at the next meeting to participate. So. That's all you really want to say? <laughs> you really usually have a lot to say. <laughs> I, you, you know, nine plus, the over nine years on the Williamstown School Board and now on the Payne Mountain, the merger of Northfield Williamstown, the new Payne Mountain School District. I've been on SU boards. I've been on uh, teacher and staff and contract negotiation committees. Uh, I work as a treasurer. Well, work. I, I'm the treasurer and general volunteer, you know, with others over at the Williamstown Food Shelf. And I, I was actually a when EC Fiber first started up, I was sitting w working with them, you know, up until Williamstown decided to bail, which isn't going to happen this time. But, uh, you know, th that, that was a whole separate story that when somebody has a lot of hours, I'd be happy to. But so th this is a big interest of mine. And, and it's, a, it's about, it, it's about uh, business and personal communications. And uh, to me, it's for, uh, in respect to Williamstown, it's a lot of economic development stuff. So. Thanks. Yes. Can, can I else? ask Charlie be allowed to introduce himself? Cause okay. I think he uh, he and I have been going to EC Fiber meetings for quite a quite a long time. My name is Charles Larkin. I, I'm sorry, last name? Charles Larkin, L A R K I N. Okay. Charlie Communications Engineer for the Department of Public Service for approximately 29 or 30 years. Before that, I was consumer affairs officer and electrical engineer at the department, which is an interesting mix. Steve and I, Steve and I have been just confused with the money that's being spent by Comcast and Verizon, all these folks to put marvelous fiber on the same road, like up on East Hill Mount and Middlesex. It's just three or four fibers up there. But then there's no money left over because they're competing. So there's no money left over to build the country. Even though the public service grant by the state of Vermont is it expects to have these utilities share their facilities. But no sharing has ever come up that I know of. And if they had shared them, the one who was primary and made their money as by being a wholesaler, and the other guys would be retailers. And we hoped to get fiber, not internet, but fiber, out to all these people, business and residents, municipalities, schools, and we've got nowhere it seems like for 20 years. Northeast Kingdom 
I think it's a good start. And EC Fiber is a good start. And now you guys are number three in what should be about 25 or 30 groupings of towns. Barbell, Bainton, Windsor, Right River Junction. They all should have their own central Vermont fiber. <clears throat> I've strongly suggested to use the name fiber because you tell people that you have a highway and all kinds of traffic can go down at different varieties. It's like a highway. Trucks, buses, all kinds of things go down. So as a, as a point of order, that is an item on the agenda that we have to discuss later. If you could, we could definitely come back to that. Okay. Central Vermont Fiber Highway, is that what you're suggesting? <laughs> Central Vermont Fiber, period. You okay. know, it is okay. a highway. Okay, I'll remember that. Okay, yeah. <coughs> okay. is that anybody else? <laughs> you got everybody. Wow. Alan, are there any communities who voted to participate but have not sent a representative this evening? Uh, Roxbury and Williamstown. Cal, Cal, Callis. Oh, and, and Callis. I'm sorry. He, uh, David Healy is the representative from Callis. He is traveling today. Okay. Uh, he will. He expects to be at the next meeting. Okay. Thanks, Josh. So, do people feel comfortable going ahead and voting for officers at this point? Is it possible for that that? Uh, I think we we're, we are going to need to potentially point point of order. Sure. Um, this is a where you're not a member of the board. Let's let's have the board make make the decision if you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, you're, you're saying alternates can't take part in discussion. Can take That's part in discussion if recognized by the chair, right. and the acting chair right now is Alan. Right. And I'm, we have to we have some alternates sitting out there and one sitting here. Do we have a protocol for that? Is there anything? Anything. <laughs> I'll, I'll note that EC Fiber. Oh, may I, may I, Mr. Chair? At the EC Fiber meetings at the law school, it's one big kind of classroom, and all the alternates and the participants uh, participate um, and introduce their guests, etc. But it's not really a uh, a discriminatory. It's not a prerequisite that. Uh, I'll yield the floor to. Uh, well, I'm, I'm just trying to make sure that all towns feel equally represented. Some don't feel more represented than others. That, that's my only concern. I, I'm, I have absolutely nothing against you or your your municipality. Believe me. <laughs> um, do, you, do you have an idea, a good well, idea for this? I, I think the sport's going to grow because there are going to be a few more towns, and. Um, I think it's a little cumbersome to have a really big board. It's hard, obviously for voting purposes, only the, the, the representatives will vote, but I, I think we're probably better off not having alternates at the main table, but being very recognizable by the chair if they have valid comments. Presumably the alternates can sit behind the the representatives and tap them on their shoulder if they have something they want to be said by. That'd be all right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think the last thing we want is to is to not get good information from good people. We don't want a structure to prevent that you know, from happening. So I, I take your point. Your point. So I, and just echoing what Michael said, just in the interest of time, I'm the sort of person who likes to get things done. Right. And just so that everybody can have a chance to discuss, it's but. It, we should have the ability to weigh in with, with the chair, or weigh in with committee committees outside of the regular meetings. And, and Michael, you're right, there's going to be 15 or 16 board members, municipalities before long. Um, and again, I think just in the spirit of getting things done, I mean, we're, t we're at quarter to seven now. And we should be at uh, 610. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was ambitious. That, it was time well spent. Yeah, I got um, Okay, so why don't we provisionally have only delegates speak unless, and if, and if an alternate wants to speak, tap your delegate and ask, bring the information forward that way. Does that work? No. No, provisionally, <laughs> come on, give me a break. Provisionally at least, we can see how that works. Okay, it seems to be some consensus that we can at least try that in the beginning. 
So uh, the question before us is whether we want to move forward with choosing officers. The first officer who we did have a motion on the floor a while ago was to um, choose chair, and Jeremy had been nominated. Um, do we want to move forward with that question? Yeah. Yes, yes, I would uh, like to add in on that one that uh, Jeremy is basically the reason we're all here uh, at this point uh, through his organization and stuff. I would like to be able to skip this idea of provisional uh, chairmanship and move directly to a, uh, a vote on you know either up or down for uh, Jeremy. I'd like to withdraw my suggestion of the provisional. Okay. And. Um, Twelve months from now, we can revisit. Right, he's provisional for twelve months. We can look at that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. sure. uh, so, hearing no other nominations, can I declare the nominations closed? We have one nominee for board chair. That's Jeremy. Can can we have the clerk cast one vote? <laughs> we don't have a clerk. I'm, All those I'm the acting clerk, so that's troublesome. <laughs> yeah. All those in favor of Jeremy as chair, say aye. 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 Opposed? Your chair. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thanks, Alan. Uh, so, next order of business um, nominations for vice chair. I actually would like to nominate Phil Payet because I've seen him in all sorts of roles uh, as somebody who I was the board chair for him, and <coughs> I've seen him um, on boards, and he's just really good at working with people. And he's a smart guy. So, um, can I, Phil I, raise his hand? Smart guy? <laughs> Phil, Phil's the wider guy. Thank you. Any other nominations for vice chair? Uh, any further discussion? Okay, again, we don't have a clerk, so uh, all in favor of electing uh, Phil Hayek as vice chair, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Bill, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, and we also need someone to serve as a clerk. Do we have any nominations for clerk? So, just a question. You said that the clerk doesn't have to be a member of the board? That's correct. Mm -hmm. So, all of us probably don't want to do this job because it might require taking minutes. It right. will <laughs> <we're laughs> require, require taking minutes. <laughs> So can we assure whoever is chosen clerk that he or she won't have to take minutes? Or can we not do that? Somebody has to take minutes. It is required by law. As a public body, we have to provide minutes. Um, Rama? Yeah, just as a suggestion from the peanut gallery here, is one thing we've done recently at the school board meetings is we've really cut back on the note taking for the, for the minutes to pretty much what's legally required. And if people need a verbatim transcript, they either can make it themselves or they can watch video watch it, on yeah. it. And we found that all of a sudden people were willing to do the clerk job on our school boards. Mm -hmm. And that's all it took was to promise that you weren't. There was one other that we did make a promise. All motions had to be reduced to writing, so the clerk didn't have to figure out what was what trying to be said. Mm -hmm. But that's just from the peanut gallery. So, and so correct me if I'm wrong, Jim, but all that's required to be in minutes is um, essentially, the who is there and the votes. Motions made, seconds if they were made, which we, they aren't required for this board actually because we're a small board. So, uh, attendance, uh, motions, outcome of motions, um, uh, a general description of the of the action taken and, and uh, uh, that reflects the, the discussion of the board. In a nutshell. So with that, with that in mind, would anyone like to self-nominate, or are there any alternates in the audience who would like to serve in that capacity that we could have a board member nominate them for? Becca, is that? Are you volunteering <laughs> yourself as I am. Okay, so that and that you become, you then become an officer and an alternate, which is which is exciting. Um, is there a board member that would like to nominate Becca Schrader? I will nominate Becca. Okay. Are you, are you writing all this down? <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any further nominations for clerk? Okay. I'll close nominations. Again, we still don't have a clerk quite yet. 
Um, so all in favor of um, Becca Schrader being clerk, say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Abstentions? Congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Does she get to move to the table now or should I give up um, the seat? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moving to the table might might be a good idea. I mean if you if you feel like it otherwise you're uh, or at least some you sort of some flat service. Yeah. So so you're 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 not technically a voting member at the moment, but you are um, indispensable. Okay. Um, but while you're Mr. who's your chair now? Yes. Can I make a point about related to the minutes Please. I think it would be good for the board to maybe not act tonight but consider uh, whether audio and, and or video I know that Orca is covering it tonight but they not, might not necessarily cover every night but as there's going to likely to be subcommittees mm -hmm. and there's a lot of technical information I believe the board should consider uh, or at least discuss the policy of recording these these meetings because uh, I've run into where I make a full presentation before the Green Mountain Care Board, complete with handouts, and it's all missing from the minutes. And that's not a position we want to get into. Okay. I think that seems fair. We can, once we get to committees, I think that's a reasonable thing to, to talk about. Um, are there any additions or changes to the agenda as, as presented? Okay. Any public comment on items that are not on the agenda? Was there an agenda? Does it discuss the, uh, the name? Of the yes. Element? Yes. Th th there is an item that discussing the name of the. Uh, and we've got the mission. It's um, it's listed six fifty five discussion of name and finally certificate of organization with the secretary of state. I think that's yeah, the yeah. Okay. One issue that I might think of, even though the agenda is, I think one minute is a little bit too small. If you've got even one person who wants to speak, just to introduce themselves so, for a minute. So I was completely spitballing with the times. So, so no, I was not expecting any, anybody other than the board members really to be here. And Orca, thank you. Um, so I was uh, hoping that we could get right to it. But in, in the future, we can designate Five minutes, ten minutes. The interfacing between this organization, AC Fiber and North Northern Country, whatever that name was. The one in the Northeast Kingdom. Northeast Kingdom <coughs> country. To a degree, you've got two wheels there, and we shouldn't just spend all your time reinventing the third wheel. I, you should make a lot of interfacing with those people and with the select committees and really try to figure out what you're doing before you just jump in and, in essence, waste time. That, the rest of the comments I'll have when you come to them on the agenda. Excellent. Thanks. I, I have a public comment, I guess, because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure which hat I'm wearing when. Uh, Montpelier is unique in that we are the only member of both EC Fiber and CV, CV Fiber, for lack of a better name. Uh, that prevents, that presents an opportunity, I believe, and Velcos Or a conflict of interest. Or a conflict of interest. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, we'll <laughs> uh, I am actually not the delegate, Montpelier delegate to EC Fiber. Uh, John Block, who's suffering health concerns, and Rob Chapman, who is director of ORCA, uh, has not asked to be reappointed. But I believe that this board should discuss and consider whether it welcomes the opportunity presented or conflict presented by being a member of both. Um, if, for example, high def state house proceedings can be available across the EC fiber network within a period of weeks or months, that would be uh, a huge advantage uh, towards building support for these types of things. Uh, the Velco fiber does directly run between those two networks, and a lot of efficient resources could be so. So this is, uh, this is, in, in my opinion, um, one, of the, one of those tasks to explore that we can put on a committee to look okay. at to look at how we can better interface with Kingdom Fiber 
and how we can better interface with EC Fiber. I've had a lot of meetings with EC Fiber. I have an EC Fiber presentation actually in your in the Google Drive that I shared with everybody. And if we have time later, I'd actually like to walk through it for everybody so that I can share what I learned from them with you. And I know uh, Irv Tomei, Carol Monroe are very happy to show up to one of these meetings and just brain dump to us. Um, what I'm hoping for, because this is a large board, I'm hoping that we can have working committees and those working committees can actually work, bring their findings and bring their consensus back to the larger board to act on and move forward and be a little bit more nimble than um, you know, 15 folks or however many it ends up being in our own room together. Oh, okay, so I'll skip over the things that I think you're referring to delegate committees. Uh, transparency, I think, head, head on how, how we deal with transparency. I, I believe that uh, much has gone, and kudos to you for having pulled this together this far. Uh, I do want to note that I put this proposal out back in 2015, and, but you acted on it and got it on the ballots. So, um, again, but my, uh, I commend your efforts. But the transparency issue, I know it's an area where EC Fiber stumbled. M many of the issues that they weren't so comfortable with disappeared from the minutes. Uh, someone there under council took the position that their maps of their where they built fiber are trade secrets. I, I think we need to head that off at the pass. It, that we're, we're basically clarifying whether we're doing business community business in a public transparent manner and, and and I would and the item at 710 the review of Vermont open meetings and public record requirements I'm hoping that we can come back and spend more time I'm more thinking philosophically that, that more so, so than so, the so let's the so I think we ought to have a philosophical conversation sure. outside of okay. this meeting you and I can have coffee and philosophy uh, okay. I think you're gonna need to deal with the conflicts issue uh, I, I will just lay it on the table that <clears throat> Uh, with with all due respect, that the administration made a $25 million, 25-year decision to invite AT&T in to eat however much lunch they can gobble. And they do have designs to put in video services, et cetera. And they're going to have the benefit of that $25 million to build fiber and towers. Um, and that's under the supervision of the member from Northfield. So that is not correct. Okay. So, let's, so, let's so, so sure. gen gentlemen, in, in the interest of this not devolving into a much larger discussion, um, how do you define conflict? Con conflict of interest is a is a wonderful, wonderful yeah. job for the bylaws committee, and there are model conflict okay. of interest standards that come out of the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Jim, you probably wrote part of that. Um, okay. That those model um, those model bylaws um, will be made available to whoever serves on that committee. And again, these committees don't have to be just board members. So I suspect, Mr. Whitaker, that this would be a great place for you to put your energy and make sure that we clearly delineate what is a conflict and what's it's, not. Okay. I, I'll accept that. I it did not have the... But I also want to just caution. I, I would suggest, that I've said this to you in our phone call, that we back up a little bit and not assert that this is the plan for these prices at these speeds by these dates and that we treat this as a real infant and all things are possible because the, the press latched onto some of those prices and speeds and dates uh, erroneously and I think we could have microcells working in Woodbury in 2018. We don't need to say you won't see anything lit till 2020. So, so, so that's, a, that's a good point and I would, I'm, I'm going to actually cut you off at this that's point. Fine. I'm, I'm sure you still have I more to say. Um, there, there, are some, there are some practical <coughs> issues about the, reviewing the statute that will make it so we will, we will not do anything in 2018. It is 100% impossible. There's a, I will explain that in, in a bit. So is there any other public comment on items that are not on the agenda? Okay. Um, we have um, before us a petition for admission to Central Vermont Internet. The Cabot Select Board voted to um, ask to join the Central Vermont Internet Board uh, to join the district, and they have um, kind of preemptively appointed Mr. Gilbert here as their representative. So he's been uh, been quiet sitting next to me here, but um, I'm hoping that uh, somebody will make a motion to um, 
admit Cabot into the communications union district known as Central Vermont Internet. I'll move it. Okay, All right. we have a motion and a second. Okay, motion by Michael Birnbaum, second by Dan Jones. Any discussion? I, I actually do have a question. Can anybody anywhere apply for membership? I mean, if, if they're a Vermont municipality, yes. We don't have to accept. Is, is that Central Vermont, or is it uh, any? No, it's the statute well, says. Well, do we have the same problem with AC Fiber with uh, members too far away from the? Sure. So if if uh, Franklin Town said, "Hey, we want to join you," we would probably say it doesn't make sense. We're we're not going to back all their traffic to you know, to Franklin County. But Cabot is contiguous to Calison. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's there in Marshall? And. Um, mm -hmm. More town is going to be putting in front of their voters in November. Mm -hmm. Orange is interested. The Orange Select Board is all. Is this just, just Cabot Select Board, not the Cabot uh, <laughs> voters? So, b because they missed the deadline of um, putting in front of the voters at a town meeting to be voted on from the floor or by ballot, they can't technically join in, in the same way. Mary Town is voting today, um, so they will hopefully join, at, you know, at the next meeting with the, with their delegate. Um, but Cabot got their ducks in a row slightly late, are petitioning to join, and have uh, preemptively appointed Mr. Gilbert. Elmore did the same thing? Elmore actually called a special town meeting and held a vote in front of the voters, mm -hmm. and then held a select board meeting immediately thereafter to appoint the, the uh, delegate and the alternate. But they don't need to be accepted the way No, no be, be, because, they, because they were part of the original group of municipalities that, that voted before the deadline. Um, so, regarding Cabot, does, will the voters have to affirm the select board's decision, or how did the, so the select board has the authority to? Yep. As, and there's the same period of time that applies to any municipality as long as we're not in a contract of those things that they, they can change their mind, or we're not we're not going to. There's nothing different than the voters voting in at this point. No, no, they're uh, equal <laughs> equal members otherwise. Okay. Um, in, in the future, if there was a town that wanted to join, once there's infrastructure in place, statute provides for that this board can decide, do we want to you know, um, have them buy in, right. essentially, which I, we're not really in the position sure. to do. Thanks. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor of admitting Cabot into the uh, Central Vermont Internet <coughs> Communications Union District, please signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Unanimously, the eyes have it. Welcome, Mr. Gilbert. If you want to. I just got taped. And now you can vote. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, so a uh, review of statute and adoption of, of meeting conduct. Uh, statute says we adopt Robert rules, Robert's Rules of Order, which is awfully prescriptive because I know everybody's. Right. Memorize right. this. Um, I have a reasonably good, um, reasonably good um, understanding of this, but I would imagine even the lawyers in the room have not are not fully cognizant of every twist and turn. Um, one of the things that we do on, on the Berlin Select Board that I would like to put out there is to um, allow for a little bit of discussion before motions. Uh, we've sort of been informally doing this already, um, but otherwise following Robert's rules of order. Um, does that seem like a like a reasonable before motion? Before motion, we're, as a matter of fact, we're doing it right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'd like to offer that the, the statute provides that except as otherwise provided by law or as may be agreed upon by the board, Robert's rules of order shall govern all meetings. Right. So we have the authority to adopt rules of procedure that address things such as the participation of alternates, voting requirements, motions, speaking to motions, discussions, and things along those lines. And I would offer to the board to draft a set of rules of procedure for the board's consideration for adoption to run our own our own meetings. I would love for you to do that. And, and the actual the, and the league has those. Um, I think the league has a has a draft template for that too that you could we probably do. borrow quite a lot from. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, so it so it turns out. Um, the reason that we're not going to do anything in 2018 is that um, technically there is a six-month window that can that can allow for members of the public 
to challenge the creation of the district. If someone thinks that it was not properly um, done somehow, um, they could challenge that. And that essentially prevents us from holding on to any money or spending money or taking out bonds or doing much of anything of note until those six months have passed. Um, so once six months have passed, that's it, we're here, it, it's done. Is, is that dated from the vote in the town meeting, from town meeting day, or is it voted that day, dated from today? Um, from the six months from the date of the recording in the office of the Secretary of State of the certificate required by whatever subsection. So, so we're not even there yet. <laughs> we're not even there yet. So our uh, intrepid clerk um, will be um, filing a certificate of organization with the Secretary of State, which, and we'll talk about that uh, in a later item uh, because there was a discussion of the name and whether we're called Central Vermont Internet or something else. Uh, it's got to go on the on the actual formal record as the formal name. So um, that's something that, that we have to keep in mind. So unfortunately, you know, I had people walk up to me at town meeting and say, "Here's take you know here take my money," L literally, and I had to say, "Bank account first, please." It's like we we, we got to get a bank account. We have to get a um, a tax ID. Nonprofit status of uh, the IRS to to accept. Well, we have to get an IRS. Well, if we're going to accept any money as a tax deductible entity, or as a tax deductible, it just took me nine months. That's why. So, so at, un, until then, we won't be able to to say that we're technically nonprofit. So these are these are things that will need to be assigned to appropriate committees and such. Um, at, we are a technically a municipality. Right. Donations made to a municipality for a public purpose are tax deductible. Awesome. So we can operate under a general EIN number, employer identification number issued by the IRS, without having to register as a charity. Okay, so we so the IRS just says your municipality, you're good. Yes, and they will. If we were to provide them with the evidence of our creation, they will provide us back a letter saying that you are a charitable organization to which donations can be made. Is that something that we need to do? Um, we might need to do it if someone wants to make a donation to us, and they request that letter from us. Is there anybody interested in going and uh, creating creating that EIN and putting the paperwork together for that? owning that, or is that something that we should give to a executive or other committee? I would propose that you or the vice chair uh, do that. The, the, the filing with the Secretary of State is perform a, make sure that your bylaws, any bylaws, are done at the same time or it's an extra at, okay. at, at the Secretary of State's. I, I, I don't think that we have to file bylaws at the time that we file the this certificate of organization as a as this, but 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 even so, it's what another twenty five dollars. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll pay the twenty five dollars. So don't worry about it. Um, I think it's more important for us to get that six month clock ticking, yeah. rather than waiting for another for another meeting to get bylaws done. I also think that the six month prescription is useful for us. Um, what Charlie and, and Steve and others have said, you know, let's figure it all out before we right. jump in the water. Definitely. So that's great. We can have a lot of stuff figured out by the time we're able to do it. And for six months, I could file an objection and get rid of you. That's true. <laughs> you totally could. Right. <laughs> okay, so, so taxes, um, <laughs> towns cannot give us tax money under any, in any form. They're insulated from our lending once we get that far. Thank you, Burlington Telecom. Yeah. Um, yes, we, we don't want to become Burlington Telecom. I'm not interested in, you know, talking to reporters and having to be, you know, in that sort of situation. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Uh, a quorum uh, is 50% of district members. Uh, an action by the majority of the quorum is binding. It's not should, shouldn't be surprising. Um, anything there, unless replaced in the manner provided by whatever representative on the governing board shall hold office until his or her successor is duly appointed. Any representative or alternate may be reappointed to successive terms without limit. Vacancies uh, should be filled within 30 days by the select board or city councils. Rules of procedure. Jim read that part already. Uh, compensation of representatives. We'll put it this way: don't make me plans. 
Um, once there's financials, we're required to go through an audit. Uh, the board may establish one or more committees. Um, officer may be removed by a two-thirds vote of the board whenever in its judgment the best interest of the district shall be served. So if I totally go off the rails, you know, pull, pull the plug. Uh, fiscal year is defined by statute as January 1st to December 31st. Um, we have to submit a budget on or before October 21st. Um, and we have to distribute that to the legislative body of each district member for review and comment. Um, there's some specific uh, details about what goes in there, but because we're not going to be handling money this year, it's going to be a pretty boring report. It's like, here, look, zero in, zero out. Um, pledge of revenues. Um, we are allowed to take out revenue bonds, which are different than a lot of municipal municipal bonds that that were spent, for example, in the renovation of the school that bought these wonderful tables that we're, that we're sitting at right now. That's um, a bond. It's a loan in anticipation of revenues. Um, <coughs> special meetings are conducted, uh, withdrawal of a member municipality, admission of district members. We've actually gone through this process once before, how to dissolve the communications union district. Um, I just sort of wanted to meander through that. Jerry? Is there something there uh, easily accessible about the role of the alternate? The, um, as I understand it, the alternate s serves when the main delegate is unavailable. And the vote of an alternate is the equivalent of a vote of a main delegate if the main delegate is not there. Indeed. Mm. <clears throat> um, but you wouldn't, so if, if I were to be gone at, at the next meeting, you would not, for example, get the, the chairmanship. No, understood. <laughs> Just making sure. Came for Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other any other questions or thoughts about statute uh, or adoption of meeting conduct? Is everybody generally amenable to uh, gym and bylaws committee, which we'll talk about in a bit? Um, taking that as their baby. Okay. Great. Uh, next item is meeting scheduling and location. You want to know why it's at Berlin Elementary? Because my kid goes to school here and I live right down the street. Is <laughs> <laughs> that for selfishness? Um, I'm totally open. What, um, timing, location. Uh, this costs $25 and will continue to cost $25 if we use it again. The Grange, which I, the uh, Capital City Grange would have hosted us for free. Uh, but Tuesday nights they have a standing appointment and that's just not not available. Um, and we have to be Tuesday nights? It doesn't have to be Tuesday nights. It shouldn't be Monday nights though. No. Monday nights will conflict with my board meetings. Tonight overlaps with DC Fiber, so if Montpelier is going to, it's, it'll need different delegates or staggered with their meetings. Yeah, it, it, but it, it would be strange for an for a representative to be an EC Fiber representative at the same time as a CVI representative. I mean, I, I think we're, we're pretty friendly with them, but I don't know that that makes sense to have one person going to a communications union district meeting every Tuesday of their life. It just doesn't sound like fun to me. So we're thinking about doing one meeting a month? Um, I was thinking initially two meetings a month probably makes more sense, more, more discussion, um, probably makes sense. Committee meetings could happen more often than that as the committees see fit. Thoughts? <clears throat> Do you I like Tuesdays? Does this time work generally? Michael? I'm fine with the time and day of the week and I'm fine with two meetings this month. Um, this, is, this meeting isn't about any nuts and bolts. It's, mm -hmm. it's about organization. It'd be good to get into s some meat of something. Um, <coughs> you might want to go from once a month, especially if there's going to be a lot of committee meetings. But okay. we should we should feel it out, I think. So I'm, he I'm hearing once a month. Do you want me to make a motion? Uh, if if you'd like to make a motion, looks no, like I, 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 I just wanted to. to uh, make a plea maybe, uh, in that I would per, per, prefer, personally, not to be on the first and third because that conflicts with Middlesex select board meetings. 
Okay. So this, so we're, we're on the second Tuesday. Second and fourth Tuesday, or just once a month, every second Tuesday. Okay. I'd like to offer a suggestion. Um, most of the municipal boards that I work with either meet on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. And I'd like to propose perhaps considering Thursday evening as the, the meeting night. Mm -hmm. That would be a problem for me, personally. I have a conflict with Thursdays. At, at every Thursday? Okay. Saturday morning, you meet at the wayside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Am I correct in thinking that the communications uh, statute says we have to meet on the second Tuesday of May every year? That would, in, in a sense, for our annual meeting, it's, it's going to be required to, to be that every year. And then, how, however, we have our, and our meetings after that. I think it's flexible. That's my only limitation is Thursday night. Okay. So any other time is okay with me. So it does, let, let, let me put it this way. Does the second Tuesday of the month conflict for anybody? <clears throat> You're here. Right. No. That's good. Does the fourth Tuesday of the month conflict for anybody? Does for you, Bob? Yeah. Okay. But, uh, I mean, if I, if I try to rub my crystal ball and uh, come up with the, uh, the deployment, et cetera, et cetera, to Elmore. I gotta believe that lack of urban development in Elmore means we'll be quite late. So if I miss a meeting or two, unless there's something pressing, I don't think Elmore cares. Well, and you have an alternate too. Who has already texted me saying that uh, he's no good at this stuff. He's a tech geek. <laughs> I have a, yeah, a PhD in computer I, science. I, I'm, so. I, I'm certainly willing to, <laughs> sit it, uh, to, to insert him into the chair uh, so that he may suffer. Yeah, he should. Um, so I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I would just want to add on that I don't, I mean, I would prefer that we not commit to two meetings a month at this point, particularly when we don't have the committees for and we don't know what kind of work we're going to need to vote on on a regular basis. I mean, if, obviously, I think we need to meet as often as we need to to keep things moving forward, but if we're going to do a lot of work in committee um, in between board meetings, it feels, I'd rather have more committee time than board time just because I feel like that's where we're going to get things done initially but that's yeah. that's what I was trying to say you said it better <laughs> so so it, so it appears that we're meandering towards a consensus here at least initially um, second Tuesday a month that would make our next meeting June 12th does anybody have any does anything leap out at anybody that June 12th would be a conflict no uh, we just have some site reviews scheduled for that night we're throwing up five roads and that's the night that we're holding hearings and site visits. Okay. So would Lowry be available? Hmm? I don't know that, probably. Okay. That might be Mr. Okay. Chair, I think with the board this big, I think that the, we're always gonna find a date that doesn't work for someone and that's why we have alternates yeah. uh, fortunately. Yeah. So okay. I think we have to do our best to get majority to be able to make it, but Okay. So can I have somebody make a motion that um, at present we hold a meeting uh, Tuesday of the month. monthly on the second Tuesday of the month? Oh, yes. Okay. Motion by Mr. Gilbert from Worcester. Second. Okay. Second from Mr. Jones from Montpelier. Any, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Okay. One abstention from Mr. Birnbaum. I have a conflict next on the twelfth. Okay. <laughs> so you're, uh, you have a Plainfield has a we have an alternate, Mr. Yes. Matt. That's right. So if you want, want to communicate to him, I'll, I'll see if I can reschedule, but I will let him know. Perfect. Okay. So one one thing down. We have the meeting scheduling tentatively. Also realize that um, realize that uh, committees s still have to be bound by open meetings and minutes and such. So if we establish a formal committee, that committee still has to follow procedures and document what they did and motions and such, and such in the spirit of transparency. Just uh, a thought, this is our regular meeting time. Correct. According to the open meeting law. Correct. Okay. This, yeah, we would be, this would be our regular meeting. Okay, so that's part one. Part two, location. You said Tuesday nights are not available in the Grange. The Grange is not, not available on Tuesday nights, ever. Not unless we go much later, and I'm not going to do that. 
Um, anybody want to volunteer there? Yes. Oh, I was just going to suggest, uh, Mr. Chair, that um, with the Regional Planning Commission's Transportation Advisory Committees, committees, et cetera, that the location is rotated amongst the member municipalities. I don't know if that's a viable option for this body or not. Typically, a town will volunteer at the end of one meeting to host the next. So that's a that's a good thought. Any thoughts one way or the other about that? I I like the stability, but I realize that. Which which is the most central town of the current towns? Berlin, Berry City, Montpelier, Middlesex. I mean, it's we're pretty wide ranging. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna be a real hike for Roxbury or Elmore or Williamstown. Pretty much any way you look at it, mm -hmm. at some time. I mean, actually, Berlin to some degree is the most central of the locations. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, I. Do you have a town hall? <sighs> have you been to our town <laughs> office? <laughs> so um, we, we could. It would be. It would be. It would be awful. Uh, which, which is why we're here. If everybody's willing to to pitch in, I'm happy to keep scheduling it here. It is going to be generally open on Tuesday nights, from what I understand. Um, I paid for it this time. Um, I can continue to contribute, but uh, I don't want to be. I don't want to be paying every. Month, so chair, do we so payment for a meeting location? Is that require that we get the a bank account and have all I mean, for outflowing money, or can it happen outside the <coughs> purview? Of, you know, a member of the board donate in money out to or take do something outside of the district? Or that's an amazing question. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's a operation. Um. Probably would be best if we didn't. That's a, that's a good Probably point. Best. So, could, we um, could we ask the Berlin School Board to waive the fee? We could. We could. So um, I'd like to have a contingency plan if they say no, so we don't have to have that. Would you like to make a motion, Mr. Hayek? Um, I, well, wait a minute. I'm not really sure what okay. I'm making for the motion. Um, I, and I'm willing to contact the school to see <coughs> about a waiver. I know, I, I know this. I know the school board chair oh, personally, okay. given, given that I, okay. I live so, here at all. Um, I'll, I'll make a motion that um, Berlin Elementary School at least be the primary meeting location and that we petition the board for a waiver of uh, the fee. Do I hear a second? Second. Full we'll discussion. Just one practical, the risk on the six month withdrawal financial, you're really just concerned about, you don't want anybody donating money to have it ripped out if we get challenged. Yeah, but if we're only taking the risk because everybody throws it in 25 bucks, is that that big of a deal? Because there might be other practical little areas where a little bit of administrative float would be helpful. And I don't know if that's, you know, it's just, you don't want to be going asking the, the general public, obviously. Right. Um, but if people are willing to put a little bit of risk money in a pot just so that we, for the six months of planning and preparation, is that? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I generally feel okay with it. Mr. Bent, is that a? Yeah, I was gonna say, I mean, you know, the stuff you printed is in-kind contribution, like yeah. yada, 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 right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's unending, so just wanna make that point. Yeah. Who was the second, sorry? I think I was. Okay. Uh, I think my town could probably provide a place if, if in the alternate if, if the chair of the school board turns you down. Okay. Would you um, explore that and make sure that they're available on June 12th? Mm -hmm. Okay. Even though I might not be there. <laughs> that's, that, that's, that's okay. Sure. It's not, sure. uh, not so far up. What, what town is that? Plainfield. Okay, so uh, we have a, a motion on the floor um, to that be for me to reach out to the Berlin Elementary School Board and ask them to waive the twenty-five dollars to continue hosting here. Okay, you ready to vote? On favor, please signify right. by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Abstaining. Excellent. Unanimous. Um, and uh, I think just for completeness, we can have a motion to hold the meeting here at Berlin Elementary 
if the Berlin Elementary School Board waives the fee, otherwise um, hold it at the Plainfield town offices, or is there uh, a... The um, town hall, which is not the town office. Okay, right, or at Plainfield Town Hall, if that, um, if that falls through with Berlin. So we'd like to make that motion. I yeah. can also see, if I, I mean, we have a fairly sizable conference room with high-speed internet and, you know, big TVs and stuff like that. I can see if we can use it as well. Where, Where is, is that? that? At the Institute for Sustainable Communities. Where is that? In Montpelier. On, on Stonecutter's Way. I could see it. Will, will it um, easily accommodate? Will, will, will it accommodate 15, 16 board members plus an audience of thousands? Not, <laughs> yeah, sort of thousands. Uh, I mean, it'll accommodate, you know, the amount of people that are here right now. If we added five more, ten more? Yeah, you're pushing it. So yeah, I can, well, I can look. For the next meeting? Yeah. Yeah, Does it make more sense for us just to go there, to go to, to Montpelier, and bypass all of these? It, it, it would be an alternate if you if the school board says no uh, and, and we have it, or do you want to just uh, if, if, where, where were you saying about there? The Institute for Sustainable Communities, right down from the co-op, near the co-op, right near the co-op. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, oh, I see your conference room there. Yeah, yeah. I have to double check the capacity. But. Okay, so somebody want to make a motion, something like that, so that we know where we're having that meeting? We already have a motion on the floor. We have a motion, right. Here, you have a motion on the floor. What, what, what was the motion? Berlin. Berlin, Berlin, Berlin. To, uh, go to go to the superintendent. Well, so I, thought we, I thought we already voted. Oh, I'm sorry. We, we, we voted for that. Oh, that was, oh, so I will be going to the Berlin School Board to seek that $25 waiver, and now I was, I was seeking a motion to actually schedule the meeting here, if that works out, or, or if not, hosting oh. it at ISC's conference room. I would move that um, we have the ISC conference room as the alternate location as the Berlin Elementary School cannot be, he cannot be waived. Okay, second. Okay, second by Mr. Hayek from Middlesex. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Mm. Wonderful. <clears throat> okay, we so have... I will not be asking playing fields because we have a place. Yeah, we're good. Okay, thank you. Okay, discussion of name and filing certificate of organization with the Secretary of State. So um, I can work with um, work with Becca um, and go over the statute. What's actually required of that? Um, it turns out that the um, actually Assistant Secretary of State is actually the Berlin Elementary School Board Chair. So I can talk to him and Chris. find out. What's that? Chris Winters. Chris Winters. Yeah. So I can I can talk to him and kill two birds with one stone about how they how they want to see that, and then we can um, put that together. But it would, would be signed by by our clerk. Um, so that has to that requires a name. Thoughts? I I have a question. Point of information. I think it's of Steve uh, because you were talking about a fiber operation. That I didn't know existed. I think you said CV fiber. He was naming this. He was you were naming that us. Was, that was a proposed name for this. Got it. So we're really talking about EC fiber, Kingdom fiber. Fiber is the official name of the Kingdom group. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. That's well, his I, approach. Well, I should explain that it's not a communications union district. It's different. It's different. But it's but doing it, the same thing. It's doing the same thing. Okay. Because I, I think there's something to be said for having a consistent piece of the name that other similar or organizations have. And if that's fiber, I think it is a good idea. Um, I mean, Seth uh, Lamont Fiber is, I it I, makes sense. I, don't I was leaning the same way. Um, but the more I've thought about um, the ideal solution for Vermont, the more I've thought that wireless still belongs and even Kingdom Fiber is going to have a wireless component and it's going to be a little confusing to our customers when we say we're, we're going to give you wireless from Kingdom Fiber um, so maybe Central Vermont Broadband uh, it is inconsistent with the other two mm -hmm. um, and I don't think there's a problem with being Central Vermont Fiber and offering some other technology as well and I don't think there's a problem with Central Vermont Internet. I just don't, it's not quite as catchy. So I think 
if you want Central Vermont in the name, I think the Central Vermont Fiber probably, it's either that or broadband to me. That's my thought. I like the Central Vermont broadband myself, just because I, I don't think that we should necessarily lock ourselves in now to a fiber or a wireless. Mm -hmm. It may be a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. What was that? I, I, didn't hear I like the uh, Central Vermont broadband. Oh, yeah. I, I think broadband is one of those terms that does give you a little more leeway in what you uh, are providing. And, uh, you know, but for a lot of people, they don't know what it means. So that's uh, where fiber, fiber is kind of uh, universal in the lexicon right now. Well, actually, people ask me, <laughs> are you selling weavings? <laughs> Never mind. We are in Vermont after all. Yeah, you have, yeah, I have a real problem with using the word broadband because I already have broadband and I'm here. Okay, because broad, yeah. broadband has a definition already. So we would be presenting an alternative definition to broadband. And I don't think that works at all because, like I said, we probably, most of us have some broadband. And we're here because the broadband that we can get is not sufficient. So I understand that it may some may be fiber, some may be may, may not be fiber, maybe maybe wireless. We don't know what it's going to be in the future. But I don't like hooking myself to a term that's already defined, and it stinks. Yeah, I just uh, you, you know, it's thinking about what is going to be offered through this is, is it's a communication service. And like it's been mentioned, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, through a hard wire or it's wireless, however you want to put it. But, you know, when you talk, go out and talk to the community and you say something like Central Vermont Broadband, Central Vermont Fiber, something like that, you're describing the hardware that you're expecting to put out. And then you have to take a description from the hardware you're going to put out and the service that's going to go over that. So why not and then put the name, put the service in the name? You know, and I'm thinking just offhand something like Central Vermont, just keep the Central Vermont in there temporarily at least, Central Vermont Communications, something along that lines. I'm not so sure that that wouldn't have already been taken by somebody. But Central Vermont Connect. Like I have connected Vermont to .net, by the way, as a URL. I'd be happy to give that I'm going to start with a question, and then I'll move to point. Uh, my question is, um, you know, in the interest of incorporating quickly, you know, you got to pick a name. Uh, do you have the ability to do a DBA or, you know, op like an operation later as determined by a marketing committee or something like that? Um, I think that's my question. Like, does it really matter, you know, other than saying, as you said, what, what, the, what, what you're providing, if it's marketing or if people understand it? And so, and so yeah, EC Fiber is technically the East Central um, Vermont <laughs> Communications Union District, that's their formal name, but they do business as EC Fiber. Yeah. And they're operated by a completely different organization that's named ValleyNet. So, uh, Mr. Fisher? Um, just a question of what, I mean, nominally we're going to be competing against other broadband services to some level. I mean, we would, not competing like we're trying to make profit, but, you know, at the same time we are trying to keep ourselves running. And so what are the other names that we would be competing against, and is that important when we consider our name? Well, I'm, I'm not sure we're yet at the point where we know whether we're going to be competing or we're going to be an open access network and allow multiple competitors to ride over this fiber. So I think it's this is a discussion probably more complex than we're going to resolve tonight. But I, I do like, that I believe that the national press and the Vermont press attention uh, to EC Fiber <clears throat> bears, brings with it some goodwill and some success story that we should not disregard. So it, it was with that thinking that suggested that CV Fiber drew a close parallel and it's replicable. It's, it doesn't preclude to also serving you know, trunk lines to antenna repeaters or offering wireless service by that name or another name. But CV fiber built it, built upon and demonstrating the sisterhood, whatever, with EC fiber, I believe has strong merit. Your, your point about uh, EV fiber 
basically uh, having the it's the uh, Vermont East uh, Central Vermont Communications Union District. Mm -hmm. Right. So we were actually passed as the at the town meetings as the communications union. You know, so uh, I, because our operating name can be anything we decide to choose yeah. it from with some marketing, whereas uh, calling it what it was on the, the ballot does seem to have a certain amount of, uh, uh, you know, con continuity. In other words, there's no question about what we became. Right, and the, and the media coverage to date, national and, and local, has been about Central Vermont right. Internet. Um, I'm not married to the name. It's literally, I, I chose it so that I could go in front of select boards just to get, to get things done. Um, I, I like the idea of putting, to, putting this on a committee um, and having a committee chew on this and talk about it for the next couple months while we go and file the paperwork as Central Vermont Internet and just get it done with. Right. Come back around, do a DBA, and once we start offering services, then we can talk about you know who it is Branding. that we're competing with, yeah. how it is that we're competing, and how we're going to position ourselves. Um, is so that you want a motion for that? I would love a motion for that. Uh, I move that we file as our official name with the Secretary of State, Central Vermont Internet. Second. Okay. Second. So. Um, little discussion. Yeah, so um, Gilbert and Gilbert. Gilbert from Worcester, <laughs> Gilbert from Cabot. Gilbert killing me. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> <and Sullivan. laughs> so it's true that that would be continuity. There's also the opportunity to say at the first meeting, at press release, at the first meeting, the Central Vermont Internet Community Unit, um, Communications Union District decided to name itself this because this, and then that gets the word out, and it could be used. It doesn't have to be, but I'm just mentioning that. Uh, to the point of broadband already being defined, broadband is continually defined. <laughs> it's defined Amen. faster and faster and faster, and that's a good thing. Um, I don't think that everybody thinks that their dial-up is broadband or their satellite is broadband. There's different levels, and uh, I still like the name. Um, I'm okay with voting whatever tonight, but I th think if we're going to be having press releases, the sooner we unify on a good marketing name, the better. Um, I don't think it should take us six months. I think we should get to a name that people are going to remember for a long time. Um, that's my thought. Any other thoughts? We have a motion on the table to move forward with our Paperwork at Central Vermont Internet. I, I think in, in full full disclosure, <laughs> can I can I move to I can't move to no. amend. Um, you can tap your thorn and ask him <laughs> to amend. No, I'm I'm, I'm actually with the original. Uh, All right. Okay. So um, not hearing any more. Um, all in favor of filing as Central Vermont Internet, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Abstaining? Okay, motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, review of Vermont open meetings and public records requirements. So this was something that I sent you. Um, many of you here have worked as, um, have worked in municipalities before on boards and um, I guess I, I can give a, a short um, a short overview for this um, or Jim if you want to give a short overview if you've done this before sure okay would you like me to I would love you to yes okay we uh, th this board would be a public body under the Vermont open meeting law uh, so uh, the, in a nutshell all of our regular meetings, the second Tuesday of the month, uh, would require 24 hour, excuse me, 48 hours notice for posting our agendas in the notice of the meeting. If we were to call a special meeting, that would require 24 hours notice uh, for the agenda and notice. Um, I'm not sure of what the specific posting requirements are, given that we have multiple communities. I assume it's one in each community. I think that's what we're going with right now. As a general matter, our meetings would have to be open to the public, 
and there must be opportunity for the public to be able to comment on matters that are on our agenda. Um, we can only use utilize executive sessions for one of those categories or opportunities specified in one BSA 313, <laughs> which lays out the uh, opportunities that the legislature provides for public bodies like us to hold an executive session. Um, in most cases, or in many cases, that requires a motion and a vote of the majority of the members present. In some cases, it actually requires two motions now, a motion of a specific finding that premature general public knowledge would clearly place the public body at a substantial disadvantage. Right, Alan? Yep, that's right. You remember that language? Yeah, there are like six of them, I think. That's right. <laughs> I think you actually drafted that uh, for, for the committee. Um, there are about six categories for which that is Isn't required. there a two-thirds vote required for executive? No, no? not okay. for a municipal board. <clears throat> okay, the majority of the members present at the meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, there are other, you know, more general uh, requirements or more general uh, uh, obligations for things, uh, deliberations in conjunction with a quasi-judicial proceeding that I don't think we would anticipate doing. We are obligated under the open meeting law to uh, produce minutes, which must be available to the public for inspection within five days. Uh, we don't yet have an inter uh, a website, but when we did, they would have to be posted on the, on the uh, website as well. Um, Wait, so we have, we have a Facebook page that could be posted there. Why not? Wouldn't hurt. Okay. Jim, can you clarify if that's business days or calendar days? Because I forget, frankly. Mm -hmm. I think it's not calendar days. But I think that one's calendar days. Okay. Yeah, calendar I, I, days. I, I think there was actually a bill this year to change it to change business it to days. business days. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so let, let's go with calendar days. Let's yeah. go with calendar days for now. Okay. Yeah. Any other require any other questions? Um, public records. Public records. Uh, we are a public body. Um, therefore, uh, any written or recorded information, regardless of physical form or characteristics produced in the in the course of our business, is a public record. Uh, it would be able, we must have it available for public inspection and copying within three business days uh, unless we are afforded an opportunity to extend that deadline. Uh, we have to produce the record unless there is material within that record that is exempt under one of the 269 possible exemptions under the <laughs> current Vermont statutes. Um, if there is no revenue source uh, to support this activity, is that uh, a, a, uh, that doesn't free us from anything? Or? Does not free us from a single thing under either one of those. Um, uh, we should keep in mind under the open meeting law that a meeting is a gathering of the quorum of the members of the public body, so a quorum of the members of this board uh, for the purpose of discussing the business of the public body or for the purpose of taking any action. That significantly limits our ability to communicate electronically, where we're, there might be a quorum of the members of the board uh, discussing the business of the board through email, Facebook, other electronic communications. So basically, email and other electronic communications should be used to disseminate information to board members, but the board members should withhold their discussion of that information, discussion of board business, until they come to the meetings. Okay? But smaller groupings, you know, smaller than the quorum sure. of members of this board can discuss. It's an interesting these wrinkle because not only we, a public body is not only this body, but any committee <coughs> formed by this body as well. So the committee of this board is also subject to the open meeting law and subject to all of the requirements right. that I just talked but, about. But several random members who aren't necessarily for, uh, an, an acknowledged <coughs> committee. We need to look at whether it is a gathering of the quorum of the members of the public body. So how many total? So a quorum would be seven. At this would moment. Be, a quorum would be seven. Okay. Well, so the quorum rule is, I'm, I'm not a lawyer, but we've always practiced that the quorum rule applies to committees based on the membership of the committee. Mm -hmm. So if you treat this body and the quorum requirements of this body, and there were committees appointed by this body, yes. which, can, which were constituted by fewer members, yes. quorum there is less than for quorum here. Of That's right. Mm -hmm. it, is a, it is a majority of the members of the, appoint, of the appointed committee. And just to be clear, Jim, I, there, is a, there is now in the law 
a provision for electronic meeting, meetings of the board, right? But it's a separate warning. I, I forget what the rules are, but it has to be warned in a, in a different way. There has to be a place, a physical place where somebody can go sure. and be connected to the meeting. We can, we can communicate telephonically or by other electronic means so long as there is, that that is um, announced in the meeting agenda, that there is a physical place where a member of the public can come and listen and participate. And um, uh, what, there's a, another specific requirement that more than a quorum of us are participating by speakerphone. Um, I think it requires that we roll do it by call. roll call. Roll call. That's yeah. right. well, roll call on anything that's not unanimous. Right. That's right. And, right. and uh, affirmative identification of members as they join. Right. That's, that's exactly. correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there was, this is an area that reflects on the transparency, and I don't want to try to solve it tonight, but mm -hmm. I, I just want to caution that <coughs> recently there was a case where somebody was doing a sequential uh, quorum, in effect. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would just say that practices and policies should be developed that head that off before it ever uh, could bite us in the tail. Mm -hmm. um, because even, I mean, I made a request to you on the 20th of April for the stuff leading up to this meeting. Uh, it got overlooked, but you're forgiven. Uh, <laughs> um, but, but it's a point that, in effect, the, the thing didn't exist until tonight's meeting. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to come after you for all those records. <laughs> but I, I guess the point is I do not want to see a self-appointed executive committee or super executive committee round robining and making decisions that are then def default when they get here. You know? um, I, I, sorry I had to leave the room for a minute, but I'm not sure if you guys discussed alternates under this under this scenario or not because when you start when you start having alternates that can sit in for a board member that's not present, all of a sudden you, you start really expanding the definition of what a quorum is. So a, a, the easy way around that would be a simple bylaw that very specifically defines when an alternate can sit in for an actual <coughs> member of the board so you don't accidentally you know, have a, end up with a quorum just because of alternates getting together because who knows when they're sitting as a board member or as an alternate. That's true. Um, so the statute says one or more alternates to serve in the absence of the designated representative. So if there were a bunch, if there were a quorum of alternates in a room together, I would suspect they would be bound by the same requirements as, as the main representatives. But what you're saying, though, they could also vote to bind, the, bind this organization. Not without a properly worn meeting. But again, some of this will be alleviated if you decide to record all the meetings so that anybody can catch up on whatever sure. they missed. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and so this is this should hopefully go to the, the bylaws committee to, to nail this down and talk about how alternates are handled. So if the two alternates from East Montpelier show up, do you thumb wrestle for it or something? Who, who, <laughs> goes, who goes first? Uh, who gets the voting rights? I think that's something that should be clarified um, Either by the East Montpelier Select Board, or by this by this body as well. Um, so, um, if somebody asks you for a copy of an email that you sent that was in um, that was related to the business of this board, you are obliged to provide it. So keep that in mind. Can I just? I'm sorry, this isn't totally related, but since I started late, I didn't. Um write down everybody's name at the beginning. Um, so I'm just passing around a paper that name, town, and what your role is, if awesome. you wouldn't mind, so I can <coughs> attend this properly. <coughs> I just had a thought. Um, er earlier in our discussion, um, <coughs> I heard something about public-private partnerships, and I know that DC Fiber delivers its services uh, through ValleyNet, mm -hmm. which is a different kind. It's not a public It's, an, it's a nonprofit. Yep. Yeah. Um, and maybe we would do that, something like that, um, in, in which case what happens to transparency? They're still bound by it. They are, as, a, as an arm of a governmental organization, 
they are required to also ab abide by those as well. And speaking of medical records, I believe you found that, Mr. Whitaker, that through um, VITAL, V-I-T-L, who is a, a subcontractor for handling medical stuff and software yeah. for the state of Vermont, that it was found by the, it was the Supreme Court, right? Superior Court. Superior Court found that they did indeed have to follow all the transparency requirements as well. But that doesn't mean that they can't redact per home cell phone numbers or dates of birth or medical record. That's one know, of one of those many Yeah, the, the redactions yeah. thing needs to this is an area where the body will need counsel on helping people respond transparently and promptly with records. I was just going to offer that it may behoove this body at some point in addition to getting a website for this organization to also issue email addresses uh, for the members of the board and for the alternates and whoever else is participating uh, simply because of public records requirements. Um, right now I'm sure we're all, most of us are using our private emails and those would be subject to public records requests. And, and but even if we did get the email addresses then that we're at whatever it is dot org or dot net or whatever our our personal emails our personal Facebook pages or whatever anything any communication related to the behave, the activity on this board would still be discoverable as a public record. Yes. I was just wondering uh, this morning uh, or you know when you put up your sort of additions to the uh, agenda I sent it to the woman in the city manager's office who does the posting to the city website, et cetera. I was wondering if we made a collective email uh, address of all of those uh, people. Would uh, posting to that uh, be uh, sufficient for the uh, public records? Um, as, as, as the, so the, the warning language, um, yeah, I, I, well, either the warning language or the actual records of the uh, meeting. If they, if, they said, if we said to the uh, the separate cities, uh, separate towns, to uh, have just a slot in their website for the uh, this, that we could request the person who does that. Uh, That's a great submission. idea. And posting the agenda, uh, posting the event, and doing uh, and. Uh, posting the records so that rather than us have, trying to have a website and maintain those records at this point. So which municipality wants to uh, wants to take that? I, I think it's just to, to clarify, Jim, if you help me in this, I think you're kind of mixing two things here. You're mixing meeting warnings and access to public records. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you want to be careful because the access to public records, if I remember correctly, usually a keeper, a custodian of the records at least in a government agency department or whatever, will be appointed as the point person who has, who, who is the person you go to to request, to make a public records request. And I don't think we want to make every town clerk in the area okay. a custodian of records who has to respond to records requests. I think we could ask them to post post uh, warnings of our meetings. Warnings agenda minutes. Yeah, and, yeah, and that's, that's public meeting stuff. But I think the access to public records is a, is a different ball of wax, and we don't want to get them involved in that. And I'm sure they don't want to get involved in that. You think Montpelier would be willing to, uh, to host this? <laughs> I can ask that probably, you know, not, now that you've clarified it, uh, we'll, we'll see. Right. So, I mean, so I, I posted it to the Facebook page. It's public. It doesn't require a login for anybody to see those there. You don't have to have a Facebook account. Um, so at, at present, okay, I think fine. Then we'll, we'll we'll leave it with that, and, we'll, and I, I, then I will just suggest that we, we have a for you, uh, you know, for the meetings, a list of all of those uh, city clerks who, uh, f you know, so the one email would basically do the warnings. Yeah. So I think if you um, we can send that in those emails email addresses to our clerk when we send out a meeting warning then um, we can make sure that those are out there. And I also sent them to like uh, um, Orca, CBTV, and in, in Barrie, the other community access. Um, uh, who else I sent it to? Like Times, Time, Argus. Times Argus, The World, Northfield News. Um, and what they do with them, I mean, that's, that's up to them. But in terms of, a, of being um, as widely distributed as possible so if anybody is interested in one of one of the items on the agenda then I think then we can do do the right thing. 
Might I suggest uh, the board consider using a Google group or Google Drive as a <coughs> library, common library, similar to what you did, mm -hmm. but I particularly don't go to Facebook because I don't want them tracking and scraping sure. every, uh, every, my every move. Sure. So yeah, so I can, I can post instead. I'll, I'll, I'll post it there and I will put a copy of the, the PDF in the Google Drive, which I did. It's, it's in there and I can just send you a link to, um, to the Google Drive then as well. That's. And then subfolders, I, I, the legislature has a very good model where things are sorted by week, handouts. I, week. I, I'm sure our clerk will do a terrific job of organizing <laughs> all of these, these documents in a really clear and easy to understand way. Yeah. Uh, I'm unsure if we would technically be eligible for the Google Grants for Nonprofits um, uh, setup, um, but we, I, I'm happy to look into that once, once we're incorporated. Um, it sets you up with, you know, essentially domain management and email addresses and all of that stuff, basically. Yeah, right. So, <coughs> talking about a domain, we get back to the name. <coughs> so, maybe we don't want to get the web address quite yet until we get through that. Right. Yes, that was on my list of things to talk about, and I crossed that out, given that we're going to talk to the committees, hopefully, in, in just a moment. Um, anything else about uh, open meetings, public records? Anybody wants to comment on or discuss? I, I think it's worth noting that the administration or public safety agency has taken a position that email addresses are a threat to the personal safety of the individual. So all the firemen and folks that are participating in FirstNet, their email addresses are exempt. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we're, as a municipal body, we are not exempt. Or in a different bucket. Hmm. Okay. Anything else? Okay, moving on to the next thing. Task for um, an appointment of bylaws, executives, citing, and other committees. Uh, marketing committee we talked about too. Um, do we want to, um, since we had a previous discussion on this, do we want to stand up a marketing committee that will spend some time and bring its recommendation about a name and marketing approaches? Not, not citing, not much of anything else except for a name right now. Or are there other items that we want need to put in front of other, other committees? We've talked about a lot of stuff that the bylaws committee would take over. Um, the executive committee, which would be the um, chair, vice chair, and the clerk, um, would be, for the most part, responsible for organizing uh, meeting warnings with the feedback of the other board members. Um, citing, I was imagining talking about where we're putting things and what those things are. Um, I don't, maybe we're not there yet. And any other committees that the board is interested in pursuing? I thought at some point we might want a technical committee that look, would look into the you know, technology side of what we're planning to do. Okay. But well, I don't think we're ready for that. Okay, so maybe maybe not yet on that one. <clears throat> what are the things that we still need to do? So I get the to-do list. Name. What else do we need to do? Bylaws. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, by bylaws, okay. Yeah. Development. Financial development. Okay, so uh, fundraising and such. So fundraising, development. Do we have an agreed, you know, we'll call it business structure? You mentioned the term co-op in one of your uh, pieces. Is that where I do? Are, are we uh, discussing uh, actually how this gets organized as an actual operating entity? Uh, we don't have any sort of pieces, nor do we have any sort of revenues or anything. So I don't know. I mean, we should talk about it. What we imagine it looking like start, you know, beginning of the next fiscal year in January. Um, Potentially. Eventually, we are going to want a financial committee. So, organizational structure, finances, which will be related to fundraising development, probably. Yeah, you could say business development. Business yeah. development. That's just overlap with marketing. I really don't know if there's any need for it right now, but perhaps an advocacy committee of some form. Hmm. Advocacy in what form? I don't really, I don't foresee any need to approach the legislature at any point okay. in the near future. Like some sort of lo lobbying? I don't know. Okay. 
I'll, I'll put it down as, a, as something that we may want to get to. Mr. Um, there other I've, I've noticed from what you've distributed, uh, there are other uh, similar situations where uh, entities have done feasibility studies, feasibility mm -hmm. analysis, really to get the lay of the land to see what's out there, where, where exactly specifically where the need is, where does the cable, you know, where does where does the coaxial end, you know, what the level of uh, of accessibility, and really get a, get a handle around that so we know what the condition is that we're trying to serve. It's marketing business development, depending on how you view it. That's one of the, these are broad terms, but yeah, that is, that's kind of market development or assessment. Well, so so I, I'd, I'd really like to have like some concrete, like two things we can hand to a committee and say, come back at the next monthly meeting with something so that we're not saying, well, what do we do now? Mapping. If, as, as soon as we could all learn how to identify what's on the pole, is it coax, is it fiber, yeah. how many fiber vendors are there? And that's the advantage of moving the meeting around. Mm -hmm. As everyone learns to know what they're looking at, mm -hmm. you can start really getting familiar. And once you start understanding what infrastructure is available, we can start prioritizing what's, where's the low hanging fruit. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, mapping, <clears throat> that down. So there's, um, I think, our missing member from Callis is a GIS expert. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is awesome. Amazing to have on hand. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get to the real basics. We're going to figure out: Are we doing a whole town or a partial town? Are we going to use this this technology, that technology? Um, how are we going to aggregate the demand? Are we going to see w which towns can raise the money the fastest, or you know? or which ones organize well the demand aggregation is what that's called. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of moving parts and I, in, terms of, in terms of handing it to a committee to come back with an answer next, next meeting, none of, none of those. But, 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 but maybe not you want to answer, start on those. But have them chew on it a little bit and bring mm -hmm. back some recommendations about next steps. Like mm -hmm. We ran into this issue, you know, we need to have better information about what's on the polls. The, the data that we get from the state is maybe deficient and maybe there's something else that we can find that will help us answer those questions. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I think that, that what you just brought up and what the, the, Mr. Gilbert also brought up are can be broken down into separable elements that can be individual tasks that a committee can run with perhaps a mapping task of you know, mapping out what's out there. An, another a committee can and can come up with a pricing test to find out what, what the pricing options are in the different areas. And, and another committee could, could come out with some kind of outreach task to actually talk to folks and find out who would be willing to have, who's even interested in this service. Some of them could be residential, a separate committee could be looking at, or separate members of a committee could be looking at the commercial side. So, uh, so there are all these separable <laughs> tasks that, that that can be done by either different committees, certainly different folks, and then they can get brought together when the information's in hand. I'm, and I'm in general agreement there, and so it's this, this body's responsibility now to figure out what those things are and how we want to divvy up that work. So any sort of concrete um, suggestions about next steps or uh, questions to hand to, to committees, this is, this is the time to, to bring I think. I think we should start with the basic committees that we need and evaluate after you know a meeting or two or three mm -hmm. and decide you know we'll be a little bit more familiar with you know the group and who has uh, what interests we can go out and do a little research on what the other uh, EC fiber types are doing already and bring some of that back rather than try to build committees now that we may be unsure of you know how they fit in the bigger picture or sure so do you have some concrete suggestions for committees and things that we that we need to go forward with? Um, I, I think, you know, in my opinion, the, the bylaws committee bylaws. Is, is important. Um, and uh, business development, I think starting to figure out what we have and where we have it yeah. are, the, are the two that come to mind right away. Okay, so if we can, if we can keep, keep on track with just the committees that we need to create right now, and then once we've decided on those committees, then we can offer them one or two, you know, tidbits to take and come back next month with. 
we could spend an amazing amount of time right now trying to fig trying to solve all of the problems and chasing our tail around. But I, I think you're right, John. It's let's start from the beginning. Can I make a suggestion? I, to me, bylaws logically fit within the executive committee. The executive committee is not going to have a whole lot to do right off the bat. Uh, similarly, marketing in business marketing, I'm imagining, is going to handle a press release of what this first meeting happened. Maybe get the web up and organized the file system. So business development and marketing might be one committee right now. They could split off later. But I think there's an opportunity and an urgency to the public safety because of the amount of attention of the microcells going down that a public and similarly Capital West is being asked to join CVPSA and there's a million and a half dollar liability. So, so, so let's, let's kick those specifics to the business development group. So, so do I hear that a specific task for business development might be how much you frame what, what you just said? as something to hand to business development? I think the public safety is, is okay. a different thing because it's going to mean interfacing with the CVPSA and Capital West and the fire departments and, and see how well their needs might be met by what we're proposing to build. Okay, so public safety current issues is a, a concrete bit to hand to and business development. And mapping fits right in with that one. Okay. Um, I wanted to add to the idea of having a bylaws committee. <clears throat> I think it should be called a bylaws and policy committee. Because okay. I think we're going to be faced a lot of times with coming up with policies. Maybe somebody wants us to have a net neutrality policy. Definitely. And uh, I mean, that's a great idea, but actually stating a policy and developing it is a task that is best done in the committee that then brings its work to the board. And our mission needs to clarify whether we're interested in furthering mobile wireless, for example, for public safety or other reasons, right. or whether that's outside of our purview. Because right. we could get spread pretty darn thin, yeah. and we should focus on accomplishing something within a few years. So I'm, I'm wondering, uh, I, you do have, I did email you and ask you where the mission was, mm -hmm. and you pointed out that I'd missed it. So. Maybe we want to look at it again and, and amplify it or, 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 or make sure it's restrictive so that we stay focused on our goal. Right, and that's, and that's literally the next item on, on the agenda. And my, my vision, I, I understand uh, your vision and some other folks have ideas for wireless and some other things, uh, or open access for that matter. My, my vision is being a fiber to the premises provider, period, and not really getting involved in too much else beyond that. Might we need to? Sh sure. Um, but and is it expensive? Yes, of course. But um, in the in the interest of keeping it simple and keeping our mission focused, laser like, um, that was my my intent mm -hmm. as I was as I was building this. Um, Mr. Diamantidis, did you have something? Yeah, I, I, I just kind of following up where you were going and seeing that the mission is the next item on the agenda is I'm I'm wondering out loud. If that's something that gets resolved in a one-shot meeting such as this, or is that something where there, there might actually be a committee that comes back next meeting with suge a suggestion or a short list of suggestions for what is what, what a mission statement would be? Okay, so do we want a mission statement committee, or does that live with the bylaws and policy committee? I would say it lives with that. Okay. So let me just. Uh, yeah. There's, there's one, one other piece here, I guess. In a complex system, okay, uh, you're somewhat assuming that the formation of these committees, that everybody has some level of knowledge of the entire s complex system that we're facing, which I somehow fear isn't probably the case. Uh, <laughs> and that, uh, you know. Some kind of self-education functions uh, before we go down too many rabbit holes would seem to be in order so that we have a way of knowing what does our neighborhood look like in terms of the resources that exist, what, uh, the problems that uh, we may be facing, etc., so that we're not spending a lot of time spinning our wheels on uh, stuff that either is there or is uh, 
is a rabbit hole. And I, you know, and so I feel like I, I would like before going into all of these, what are the committees going to be? I would like to have a larger sense of what the uh, environment looked like. So we technically still have 50 minutes left of, of the meeting, given that you're all sitting here, captive audience. Well, I, th I think that's a great suggestion. Um, I think that's how the VTA got off the ground seven years ago or whenever it was. Yes, I've been with that. Um, they... Acronyms. Acronyms. Oh, Vermont Telecommunications Authority, sorry. <laughs> um, which no longer exists, but was... <laughs> That's a really good thing. Got off the ground, then. <laughs> <laughs> it still exists. It's muffled. It's muffled. <laughs> Anyhow, what the board did, the board was, was a, a team of, of remarkable people who all had different skills, and they did need to get educated on all the aspects of telecommunications. And they either brought people in, or they made their own presentations to each other in the first several board meetings. And I think that's a good thing for us. Had, had you thought about having somebody like Earth Tomei come in? and just say, tell us about CC Fiber and how it happened. Yes, and I, I didn't invite him tonight because I knew that we would be having these sorts of right. more basic conversations. Uh, Irv and Carol both came to my very first meeting. Um, let's see, Phil was there, um, Sasha from Plainfield was there. Who else? There was only a handful of people, mm -hmm. people that were there. Um, and they came and presented, and I actually have their presentation in the Google Drive. It's yeah, called right, Wash so. County something something. Yeah. And it actually explains a bit about EC Fiber's background and the hurdles that they went through, some of their financials. Um, and it's, it's pretty interesting. So, But it would be good to have somebody in the room so we could ask questions directly mm -hmm. of that person and say, okay. okay, tell us what you really did when it came to committees or raising okay. money. Or so so, so I'm, I'm hearing that um, I should get Irv and or Carol to show up at our next meeting and give a Presentation for a portion and of it. And maybe mm -hmm. stand at a following meeting to get into the technical. We, we, we can we can always go into more detail later, but in terms of just giving everybody a flavor. Oh yeah. So that would be perfect for understanding the EC fiber model, mm -hmm. which which is quite possibly our model, but mm -hmm. might not be. Um, one step before that is understanding all the technologies, so that that mission can be determined. Is it going to be narrowly fiber only or not? Um, Sounds like a presentation that you could give on the twelfth. Yes, um, I have a I have a four hour presentation, <laughs> which you do not want to see. <laughs> is it, is it recorded I, somewhere that you can give to us and we can watch it, it, you know, it with some popcorn? Or um, I can record it's, it. It's 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 a slide deck with a lot of commentary that's not recorded, but um, I could I could slim it down. Um, so <laughs> what I mean, I presented every imaginable kind of internet to the town of Craftsbury because they didn't know what they wanted to do. And I made yeah. it very neutral, and they chose fiber. So that'll make you feel good. Mm -hmm. But they didn't have to, and, and it really showed all the possibilities. And I think it educated them pretty well on a lot of aspects of, of what, it, what it takes to do it. OK, so? So I would be willing to share it. <laughs> yeah, so, so if you share that with us, and we could read it offline in advance of the next meeting, and, and then have Irvin Carroll, perhaps, come to why, the Why is it either or? Could, or, or you know, I mean, you, you know, could, well, couldn't we have both? In the interest of time, I think. You don't want, you don't want to spend and, many weeks before you have Irvin Carroll. He is probably not going to be here at the next meeting. Well, I'm going to do my best to change my schedule so I can. Okay. But I can offer, if, if you want to follow that model, I could offer to help people record a half hour, an hour, or a four hour in his case. Mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> no. You know, something to share with the others in an offline mode mm -hmm. through the Google Drive. The, vi sure. the, the high def video is very, very presentable on Google Drive. So hard to reach, though. It's it, it, it's a bit hard to download. Hard to reach on a DSL. Oh. <laughs> Remember why we're here? Go to, go to Kellogg Hubbard. They got fiber. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it took me about three or four hours to upload all the materials that you saw on the Google Drive there on my 768K upload connection. Broadband. Broadband. <laughs> so, um, is there any, so while we're talking about this, is there anybody else that has an, um, another model or other information that they'd like to present to the rest of the board for digestion? Like granola? Uh, this really just goes back to the earlier issue about EC Fiber and having Irvin and Carol come. Mm -hmm. uh, I had thought at some point we should do that, and but I thought also we should have a list of issues or questions for them. 
uh, so that it's not just a generic presentation. Mm -hmm. it, it, it addresses the things that we care about mm -hmm. the most. Um, a, a, and yet, I think it's too early to know what those questions mm -hmm. yeah. should be. So I think the presentation will generate questions oh. for you. I mean, my only other concern, and I shared, like, you know, there's a lot of technology options, but I think there's also a fair amount of funding, regulatory, rural broadband development, trend, blah, 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 stuff mm -hmm. that we might all benefit from understanding better. That said, I don't, I don't know it. Mm -hmm. I just, I know it's, I, I, I can mm -hmm. see lots of information bits floating around, and I, you know, how or not. You know, having a little bit of an overview or education on that would be helpful. I don't know how we necessarily pull that together. Given that we have six months uh, mm -hmm. before we can actually do anything at some level, mm -hmm. you know, the first few months of it of actually providing this self-education so that we know what the right questions to ask would not be a bad use of our time, rather than trying to have a bunch of m committee meetings to discuss things that might not be discussable yet. Right, but, but I think that there still are um, committee things that can be discussed and that we have to start somewhere. So um, does anybody have a, a concrete proposal for, if we park the committees for just a minute, um, I would love to see Michael's presentation. Um, so if you could put together your slide deck maybe in advance of the next meeting and provide that to us in advance, and if you can make it to the next meeting, if you can give, you know, give us when we're setting the agenda um, four or five days notice mm -hmm. you can make sure that you're on the agenda or not mm -hmm. um, should we invite Irvin Carroll to show what the communications union district in Vermont looks like sure mm -hmm. yeah. okay please okay so potentially the next meeting is going to be very presentation heavy where we would start with Michael for about what, 45 minutes or so or less some... if, if everyone watches the thing first then it could be okay. a lot less so, I don't know but I, I, it's going to take a bit of work because it was really customized for the town of Craftsbury. Okay. So I'm going to, you know, try to work it over okay. in all my spare time. Yeah, I'm very, very, very happy to have whatever yeah. information you can provide. Okay. So, but or I, I could present it that way, and you can just interpret it. You know, you say, "Well, this is what was Craftsbury was caring about," and we all can think about. You it want to see the, the whole kit and caboodle or the, the shrunken down version? Executive version. Executive yeah. version. With the detail underneath it. All right. <laughs> I'll do my best. Okay, great. And um, I will then go and talk to Irvin Carroll. I've, like I said, I've met with them before. I visited EC Fiber's uh, operations and looked at what they did. So that was pretty enlightening. Um, is there anything else that's going to that's going to help inform us going forward? Anybody's um, dying to hear? You know, the only other thing we might consider doing is just. Maybe before the next meeting, we can generate a list of people who we think it would be good to talk with, because there's a lot of expertise out there that's not gathered in one place. And if we could, if we could learn as much as we can from people who are a little bit ahead of us or a lot ahead of us, I think it would be really helpful. Can we task that to the business development committee? Does that seem like a reasonable thing to do to seek out more people who are experts or otherwise can be resources? I don't think of it as business development. I think of it as, as board development, actually, yeah. board education development. So, so what, what I'm saying is whose responsibility should it be? Should it be all of our responsibilities to, to try to yeah. see those people out? Yeah, I think for the next meeting we should have a list of people. Maybe all of us in the next month can just think of people or imagine the kinds of people we would like, we can think of who might be able to explain stuff to us that we're going to encounter. For free or? Oh, no, there's no money. Definitely free. There's no money. This is a, it's a municipality. They, they want to think of it as an in-kind contribution. Great. We we're not going we to have any, anything tax or whatever, but we'll say you did one for the public. It just seems to me we could very easily spend six months reinventing a wheel that's already been invented five times and improved on 20 times. Mm -hmm. We don't have to go through all that. Which is why hearing from Michael, which is why hearing from EC Fiber, right. I think is key. And, right. and right. also the funding people, so the USDA Rural Development, yeah, Northern Rural Regional Commission, all those different agencies that can 
funnel money. Mm -hmm. Yep. Have representatives. They come for free. Mm -hmm. Have them yeah, come in. I spoke to ACCD also, yeah. and they seem interested in sure. funding at least feasibility studies. For There's example. a May 11th deadline. Oh, that's only northern borders. We, we're not qualified for that. Okay. Is there anybody in Craftsbury who sort of got into this project and, 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 and lived through it as you were working on it and they were working on it? Who would citizen? want to come and present? Well, just be here and be yeah. able to answer questions. Probably. I mean, just a you know, I citizen think a few people. or a board member or what, yeah. whatever kind of structure they have. Yeah. I, I think that would be very useful, actually. Mm -hmm. So, um, Becca, you said you were having contacts with USDA Rural yeah. Development. Yep. Would you be willing to reach out and see if there's somebody there that can, Absolutely. can help out? And I can reach back out to ACCD and see if there's if they want to come and address the board rather than just giving me the um, kind of the overview of what their funding mechanism is. <coughs> um, anything else on this? Of um, can I count everybody to like brainstorm, think of people who might be resources? Excellent. Okay, so let's get back to committees here for a moment. Um, Task for bylaws and policy committee. Um, to talk about alternates, how we're going to handle alternates. That's one conflict of interest policy and mission statement. I have those as three things, three tasks for a bylaws and policy committee. Is there anything else that that bylaws and policy committee needs to do that's like burning top three that needs to move one of those out of the way? Because again, this is a one month, maybe a handful of meetings. So okay. Rules of procedure for right. our board meetings? Rules of procedure, that was the other one. Thank you. Did you say conflict of interest policy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and there is a um, League of Cities and Towns uh, conflict of interest model policy there as well. Um, and I spoke to Heather Law at the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, and I just, I'll put this out there. They have a lot of model policies for municipalities. We may or may not be able to uh, become a member of theirs with all of the, the benefits that. Um, mm -hmm. Um, that, that can come from that, but I think they're looking at possibly a, a amending their bylaws to allow districts like us to tap their resources, which are, um, those of you who have been on the select boards and city council are, are pretty amazing. There's a pretty substantial fee for that, though, isn't there, from the towns to be a part of Vermont Lakes, the cities and towns? It's a per capita fee, we probably wouldn't be charged in the, as a regular ordinary municipality, we'd probably be made a mem an associate member, okay. um, I think it probably would be substantially less than the ordinary fee charged to municipalities. But Drop I, a fiber I, into city center and they'll, they'll yeah. be okay. They'll be all set. <laughs> yeah, yeah we'll certainly talk about that. Okay. Yeah. Could save the membership fee just on the insurance that we're going to need. Yep. There's that. Uh, business Development Committee. Um, I, I heard that we should task them with public safety current issues. What else needs to go to business development? Marketing. Marketing. Market, so that's, that would DBA. be the name, right? The name and DBA. Or the, the name we be, to DBA. Yeah. Should we, the public safety, or should that wait until we kind of decide the broader mission? It seems a scope creep to me. I think yeah. so too. Okay. Can I, can I crawl yeah, off yeah. offer a <laughs> counter argument that because the CVPSA is is at a critical state in its planning and our planning really might overlap with that and there's a vote scheduled for next week on capital west fire mutual aid on whether to join and there's a lot of hesitancy this might be something that we want to explore with them sooner than later because it has the potential my, my view of it is that if we're a communications union district most of public safety is communications and a public a public safety work group and a fiber of the home work group fit logically under a communications union district but we are not in any position to do okay. anything for anything at all six months so um for for six months and so we, we can come and say hey we might be out there in a while but i don't th i don't think that that's going to convince them personally um yeah. I so, think they need the same planning that we're going to be doing in the next six so months. So why don't you reach out to them and say, there's this thing. Oh, done. Okay, so I, I think that's all we can do for now. I mean, that's my, my opinion, unless anybody in the board mm -hmm. members wants to, wants to put a motion together to 
change this. I'm going no, to. No, I think they may want to come and present what they're doing and what their needs are at one of your next meetings. Yeah, let's. Yeah. I mean, if, if and if one of them reaches out to someone and they want to do that, then let's let's have them absolutely because I think their needs and maybe they you know maybe they're the anchor institution that we've been looking for that says where we're going to start and they say here's what we need build this for us in 18 months and here's a big bucket of money in january <laughs> if, 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 if they got a big bucket of money <laughs> if, 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 if they're going to do that then i suspect we can probably move faster than we were originally envisioning do we need a legal committee because i i can see the need because of the the need we're going to need an open access petition regulatory action by the PUC in order to get on Fairpoint and Sovereignet's fiber. So if, we're, if we're going to we use, even chosen if we're going to use Sovereignet or Fairpoint's fiber, which I'm not convinced that we want to do, but that's I think that's that's okay. far enough beyond um, where we need to go. Is that the sort of so what else does business development need to go? Let's keep this on. Can I just uh, make a recommendation? I actually think probably people need a technology firm less than they might need a finance firm and a business model firm. So that could be a responsibility to my phone and purview of that committee. Okay, so um, so how would you frame that as a, as like a marching order? Like uh, uh, research financial vehicle options. And I don't know if that's immediate now, but that's up to you guys. You're the board. So research, <laughs> research finances and org structures. Yeah, that is something that that did somebody mentioned before. Yeah, okay. one of my other first mentioned. ones from business development is that sheet you had in the drive, which mm -hmm. was the served and underserved by community, mm -hmm. and kind of what that means. Just making sure we're kind of all on the same page about mm -hmm. where are we really? I think that'll fit in with the mapping. Yeah, but I mean, it doesn't have to be completely mapped to, mm -hmm. to be useful. It is. It's start. already mapped. Yeah. Well, great. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, there's an updated version of that that's not in the spreadsheet. It's unfortunately in a PDF right now. Okay. That's what uh, Clay Purvis uh, testifying to some legislative committee. It's it's in there too. It's okay. it's reasonably large, but that has an updated spreadsheet that has okay. uh, more information like that. I think it's as of January this year. Okay. Uh, so anything else for business development, or is that the name of the DBA discussion and the research finances and org structures that sufficient, you think? Not hearing anything, let's move forward with that then. Okay, so next. Um, I don't I don't want to slow us down. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, no, slow, um, we have the time. Well, for the by bylaws, I think it's really important that we, uh, or that the committee discusses how we, how we represent ourselves when we're outside of this meeting. Meaning, you know, ha who who's authorized to speak, and how they're authorized to speak, and to whom, and to and to what we say. So I, so I get a little concerned with someone representing themselves as um, Central Vermont Internet that may be a little off the reservation that's not in line with the rest of the committee. So I think the bylaws ought to address how we deal with that and how. Um, we take that up going forward to make sure that um, we're united as a as a board here and not going off in our own directions. That's a, that's a, a good point. I think um, statute has it pretty well about that. Individual board members, select board members, village trustees, city councilors, they can speak. They can always speak for themselves, and on, but only time where they can speak for the board is when they've been explicitly authorized to do so. So you know, I could say. Hi, I'm the chair, and a reporter calls me, and I can tell them what I think, I can tell them what the board did, um, but I can't say, CBI is doing this, if it's not something that the rest of you said, go tell them right. that this is what we're doing. And so that if, if we had passed a resolution or pa passed a motion that said we're doing this, then you can say we're doing this because it's a uh, statement right. of what we've already agreed. And, and, and I guess that's, that's something that I probably took for granted is being, mm -hmm. uh, being on the select board. You know, you've been on the select board, but I think for folks who have not mm -hmm. been on there, just keep, keep that in mind if you can. So, you know, you're, we're, you're part of this larger family and we're happy to have you here, but uh, um, <coughs> not any single one of us speaks for the organization. I wonder if talking points might help. Sure, is that a talking point sound like a good thing to assign to a committee? <laughs> um, I mean, is it as something that needs to be needs to be developed, um, or is that something that that we can absorb naturally when we see Michael's presentation, we see Herb's presentation? Um, 
uh, I have on, I think it's on Orca, uh, the Berlin town meeting presentation uh, the recording has me presenting to the people of Berlin answering their questions with, with my vision. Um, so, I mean, do we need to have a separate, like, to-do item for a committee to, to do this? That's a, I think that's a marketing mm -hmm. task, really. Yeah. I mean, that's what that's what we're talking about. So, like, <coughs> establishing a handful of talking points, does that make sense to go to that business development committee? Yeah, I think sure. so. Okay. Or that committee comes back with four handfuls and the, the board boils it down to a Of course. Handful. Of course. That, that makes sense. Okay. So... I'm going to say that we're we're going to be we're good with what we're asking the committees to do. But bylaws and policy committee, I'm going to go back over this one more time. Something about alternates, conflict of interest, the mission statement, rules of procedure. Uh, who can speak for Central Vermont Internet? A little bit more clarity on that. The business development committee, the name, the, the DBA, uh, research finances and organiza organizational structures, and talking points. So now here's where the magic happens. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. It's going to be on these committees. How exciting is this? So, Jim, I know, is dying to be on that bylaws and policy committee because he's done a lot of bylaws and policies. So, I'm going to write his name down. And, and I think rather than kind of onesie twosie these things, I think what I'd like to do is have one motion that says we're going to establish these committees with these current list of things to do with these um, uh, with these people in these positions. And I, I think it also makes sense to for this board to establish the chair of the individual committees so that they can just get right down to it and not have any sort of organizational question about who's running the meetings, who's scheduling them. Again, this is me. Yeah. Should we limit up. the membership to each each committee, knowing that we're going to have more committees coming out mm -hmm. in the next couple of months? Probably, and we also don't have to, ha it doesn't have to be just board members in these committees too. Right. And we can, I, I mean, Nothing saying that we can't add or remove people um, as we need to, but I think just for now, for the current... So they can be general public as well? Absolutely. Okay. So I think it is important that there is at least one board member being a part yes. of every committee yes, as sure. a rule. Yeah, as the, almost certainly as the chair. Yeah. Yeah. I think that makes sense. So I think, um, Jim, I'm just going to put it out there. I think you can be the chair. Oh. Okay. Voluntold. That's what we call it in Norwich. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, can, you else? Maybe, can you maybe add to that list makeup of committees? <clears throat> because somebody who's had to deal with committees okay. for nonprofits, <clears throat> this can get really dicey if you open it up to members beyond the board. You just want to just want to make clear <clears throat> who, okay. can, who can be on a committee, how many people who are non board can be on a committee, and so forth and so on. Okay, and so that that makes a, makes perfect sense for a policy or a bylaw yeah. to be adopted there. I, I've added that to my list and we'll go back over that once we've chosen the other um, victims <coughs> committee members. So who else wants to serve on the bylaws and policy committee? I'll do that. Alan. If Jim will have me. I, I, I'd love to have you, Alan. Okay. Yeah. Jeremy, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do that. Great. I have three members. I think unless anybody's dying to join there with a uh, quorum of two. I think that makes sense. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right. And so um, let's put a nail in the bylaws and policy committee. So we're going to, I'm going to ask somebody to make a motion to create the bylaws and policy committee with the following six charges to um, establish a, uh, evaluate conflict of interests, to discuss the mission statement, rules of procedure, who can speak for CVI, the makeup of, of committees, and some e evaluation of how alternates are handled. That, that committee is made up of Jim Barlow to be the chair, Alan Gilbert, and Phil Hayek. So moved. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Gilbert from Worcester. <laughs> we have a second. Well, second that. Okay, Mr. Quinn from Northfield. Any further discussion? Terrific. So, um, um, any, if there's any other discussion, I, I, I'd like to say any sort of suggestions that you have, you can direct it to um, all three of those gentlemen or um, one of them. Prob probably be best just to be completely careful just to send it to one of them. Pick your favorite, whoever lives geographically closest to you or, or the chair, whatever you like. Just send your feedback directly to them so that we don't have any sort of back and forth discussions that would suggest a meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
So bylaws and policy committee, done. Uh, we have the business development committee. Who is on business development committee? This is talking about the name, the DBA, research finances and organizational structures and establishing talking points. I don't want to be chair, but I'll work on it. Okay. I will work on it, but I don't want to be chair. <laughs> wow, taking one for the team, Montpelier folks. I, I see how it works. You take our water from Berlin and just... I'll work on it, but I can't be chair. I, I need, it needs to be somebody from the board. It doesn't. Why does it need to be Wait, someone from oh, the board? I, I thought that's what I heard. Uh, that's what we were for chair. Uh, we, I mean, we, we, we talked about it. I mean, we didn't establish that as a rule. You are an alternate, so in some in some way you're going to be serving on the board at some point. I would I would like to, to be on this because I've done a fair bit of research in this, but I'm going to be out of the country for about three weeks of the four weeks where committees would be meeting. Well, and, pencil yourself in and just show up at the next meeting. <laughs> I'll be there in spirit. How about that? Um, any objection to Jerry Diamantidis chairing that? Okay. Congratulations. Not until the policies say otherwise. Right. right. Have no policy yet. <laughs> well, and, and we, I mean, we can vote to override policies too as, mm -hmm. as necessary. In the true. I volunteered for that, didn't I? You did. <laughs> Bravo. It's like being back in the Coast Guard again. All right, um, great, so um, I'd like to have somebody make a motion to create a business development committee to evaluate the, um, the name, doing business as, to research the finances and the organizational structures, and to establish some talking points to bring back to the board. That, board will be that committee will be made up of Jerry Diamantides, the chair, uh, Dan Jones, and Stephen Whitaker. So moved. Thank you, is there a second? Second. Okay. So, a motion by um, Hayek from um, Middlesex, seconded by Klein of East Montpelier. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Abstaining. Thank you very much, everybody. So, we have tasks and adoption of the committees done. Adoption of mission statement. I suspect that we've just well, and buy that one because we, we have assigned it to a meeting. Um, and this can I, is. Can I ask a question? Did, did member development or technology? You had spoken about member development. Basically, how do we get ourselves educated? Uh, did that fall into? And I had spoke of mapping. T mapping technical public safety member development technology primer. Those are so as are as a as a first set of things to do for those committees that did not that did not those made the cut. enter that list okay. yet and I'm, I'm sure we will be i'm sure we will be coming back to them um okay so because we don't have to adopt the mission statement we technically have a few more minutes i would like to just um typically what we do on uh on the berlin select board is we have a quick round table so just super brief one or two sentence if there's anything you want to say um, we'll just go around the, the board members and give everybody a chance to, to say something. And uh, if you don't have anything to say, you can say pass. So let's do it in reverse order of the introductions. Uh, Alan, you want to start us out? Um, this is, we have a huge project in front of us. The small organizational stuff we're doing now is really important, although it doesn't seem to be that way. <clears throat> but it's a terrific bunch of people. Uh, this was the least painful meeting on meetings I've been to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm encouraged by the by the people that we have on the board, and I'm looking forward to uh, working with you all. I am sort of in fixed same feeling. It's amazing to out of our little uh, enclave out here in the mountains to uh, have this level of expertise and uh, commitment. I'm well, I'm encouraged and overwhelmed. I'd like to ask, what can I go read in the next month? To, you know, if, does anyone have any suggestions? I'm just, you know, point me in the right direction on where to go and let's, how to learn let's, as let's, quickly let's as connect. I can. I, I have, I should be able to answer questions and pour resources your way. I think when Michael's presentation comes out, and if you look at EC Fiber's presentation, that can also yeah. um, clarify a bit. Okay. In the interim. If I think of something, I'll send it your way. I'd appreciate it. 
Huh? I'm practicing to be a sponge. I intend to become much smarter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if we can't do much in 2018, I look forward to connecting up the first uh, user in 2019. Yeah, I just echo the sentiments of the, the, the broad diversity of people and skill set and interest is, is pretty awesome. I'd just like to say I've done enough talking. Thank you all. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really encouraged. This is uh, so exciting to see not only the level of talent and diverse backgrounds, but the level of commitment and the attention to detail that we're already putting into this. I think it goes well for what's going to come next. Would anybody like to adjourn? I move to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Okay, it's a motion by Gilbert of Worcester, second by Jones of Montpelier. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Everybody sign the sheet. Yeah. Okay.